win this football game. Some guys play 80 plays, some guys play one play. But it was a team effort. I love the way you play, but you cannot be satisfied, guys. You cannot be satisfied. Do not let this define our season. Do not let this define our season. And the Flames will look to continue to define their season here in week two of college football. Welcome to the home opener at Williams Stadium, everybody. I'm Rhett McGibbon, joined tonight by a couple of former Flames, DJ Jordan and Miles Hunter. And guys, the fans here are just going crazy, as they should be. Last week, the Flames walked down to Waco, Texas, stole one from Baylor. What does that do to define the brand of Liberty football? I think the first thing that it does, Rhett, is it works on recruiting. No longer will a Liberty University football coach walk into a home where a recruit won't know who that player is or who that coach is or who Liberty University is. I think that's the most important aspect of it. It's going to help us a whole bunch in the recruiting game. I agree. It's going to help tremendously with recruiting. I also think it sends a strong message to the nation of confirmation and affirmation that Liberty made the right decision to go to FBS. Even as an independent, without a conference, a lot of people were second-guessing that decision, but last week they said, we made the right decision and we're here to stay. Miles, you just talked about recruiting, but does it help with recruiting in the future with guys that are like maybe 10 or 11 years old that were like, wow, that was amazing? Or can they walk into somebody's house tomorrow and say, hey, we're Liberty, come to us, you have a reason to now? I think because we beat a Power 5 team that they can walk into whatever home they choose to now and say, hey, we can compete at that level, we can beat that Power 5 team, so if you want to win, you can still come to Liberty University, you don't have to go to Ohio State or Oregon. I mean, think about that sales pitch, we're going to FBS, we beat Baylor, a Power 5 team, yep. and you've got the facilities. Right behind us is an indoor facility that's better than Virginia Tech. So you can go to Hampton Roads or, or anywhere, Northern Virginia, North Carolina, and say, we have a great program, we have great facilities, you need to take us and, and give us a second look. Well, if they don't win today, it's going to look pretty bad. So let's take a look here at a couple of offensive players. They're going to have some meaning here. Foster Fuels, who's hot players to watch? The quarterback, Lawson Page. Yeah, Lawson Page is a strong player. He's their quarterback, uh, stands at six foot two. He had a great day last week with 284 yards through the air, four touchdown passes, but that was against an NAIA school. Today is a different day. He's going to have a different front four chasing him all day long. So it's going to be interesting to see how he responds. Right. And, and Miles, Carrington Mosley did well against Baylor. You have to think today he's a horse. This guy's just going to drag guys down the field with him. Carrington Mosley is full grown man. I will tell you that. <laughs> Once that man gets his pass north and south, it's hard to get him down and Baylor found that out last week. Uh, if he shows the patience on um, the willing to run behind his lineman like he did last week. He'll have a big night tonight. Mark my words, he'll go over 200 yards. Well, obviously, we're going to keep an eye on those two individuals. A couple of guys, though, last week for the Flames that kept the offense going. Buckshot Calvert and AGG. These two guys just had a special connection. We could see that live on screen. But a lot of that comes from a lot of the work they did over the summer. And with more on that, kind of down on the sidelines, a new member to our team, Bobby Bowling. Well, guys, I think it's safe to say that Buckshot may have caught all the attention on college football last weekend. When I finally, though, got the chance to ask him, you know, what played into the performance we all saw from him. He says he contributes all of his success, the hard work he put in with Coach Daly. He said his summer consisted of two things, figuring out how to gain weight and watching lots of film. And guys, from what we saw, definitely watched a lot of film, and he also gained 20 pounds. Coach Daly also honed in on the conversation and stated they really wanted him to understand the how and the why and everything that they run. So, DJ, I think the question the nation wants to know is, is this something we can expect to see from Buckshot the rest of the year, or was this just a one-time thing? Yeah, the nation got introduced to Buckshot this week. He was on Sports Center. I actually think he can continue to play because he did some of that last week or last year. You remember, guys, he came in as a freshman and, and was set a Big South record uh, at led the Big South and passing with 1,900 yards. He's got a, a lot of great talent. It's great to hear that he spent the offseason really learning the game and building his IQ for football. So I expect big things from him this year. I think the biggest thing with Buckshot is he can spread the ball around. Last week, he threw to 11 different receivers. Yep, right. I think the man can make something out of nothing. There was a broken play last week that he ended up scoring a touchdown on. Uh, Buckshot can do some pretty amazing things, and I think he won't have any problem doing his way uh, tonight with Moorhead State. Definitely will be fun to watch. Before we get to the kickoff here, we want to say that our thoughts and prayers are with everybody in Florida and everybody that's been affected by Hurricane Irma. I know this is special to Mike Tilly's heart as he works for Gleaning for the World. 
Yeah, I appreciate that, Rhett. Uh, serving on the board for Gleaning for the World, a humanitarian aid organization that responded in Texas to Hurricane Harvey and now has uh, emergency supplies uh, prepared for the state of Florida. So uh, if you'd like to donate, I encourage you to do that. Let's all do it at GFTW.org and make a difference in those people's lives. Right now, we're going to talk football, though. And uh, last week, Liberty was a 30-point underdog to Baylor. We know how that turned out. In this game, Moorhead State is the 30-point underdog. Do you think they have what it takes to make it a close one? Well, more importantly, do they think they have what it takes? Because that's the key. You have to believe going into a hostile road environment that you can steal one. Liberty did. They got the win at Baylor. And also for Moorhead State, they've got to start fast. I think that's a key for them. You saw Liberty put points on the board on their very first drive in Waco. It helped them settle in, helped them catch their breath. And Moorhead State is going to need to do the same here today. Get off to a fast start. Try to take this crowd out of it and kind of prove to themselves as well as to everybody else that they belong here they belong on the field with liberty and that the flames are in for a long day of work so it's the 45th season of liberty university football the 30th and last in the division one one double a slash fcs level as the flames are fbs bound and so we'll see how this uh, home part of the season. The home opener gets underway as both these teams are 1-0 and on the year. Moorhead State won the coin toss and uh, they will uh, be kicking off here. Foster's kick fielded at the nine yard line. Look out. What a run back for Frankie Hickson. Hickson near midfield. Well, listen, if you're worried about a little bit of a hangover or something coming into a ball game, one way to try to take care of that is a good kickoff return. And we saw it from one of the best in the nation a year ago, Frankie Hickson. Number 12, Buckshot Calvert, the National FCS Offensive Player of the Week. Unbelievable game against Baylor. Put him on the national stage last weekend. Everybody was talking about the kid from South Florida. He was on ESPN Sports Center this week, making just his ninth career start in this game. And you see his numbers from a week ago in that three point win over Baylor. That's given up to Matthews inside the 30-yard line. Canoe made that tackle. Well, listen, Kentori Matthews is an explosive Juco transfer. Didn't see a ton of them in the Baylor game, but from everything we've heard in camp, those are the kind of plays he's made all camp long. Explosive, quick, and a good weapon. Another one that you don't really even think about with an already deep group. Just the third offensive play of the game, and Liberty is inside the 30-yard line. Hickson tripped up from behind and tackled right there at the line of scrimmage by Duncan. Liberty ran 103 plays in Waco, nearly 600 yards, very quick offense. The line strong, very effective last week. Look out for Carrington Mosley on the rushing game, over 100 yards in Waco. Gandy Golden, of course, the great receiver, 200 yards a week ago. B.J. Farrow is back in the lineup after missing last week. And that's huge to get him back. Second down to the end zone. Farrow's got it for the touchdown. Touchdown, Liberty. B.J. Farrow scoring his first touchdown of the year. Welcome back, B.J. Didn't take long to make his mark. And this Flames offense picking up right where it left off in Waco. Good protection. The offensive line holds up a clean pocket and buckshot right on the money. Wide open in the end zone. Liberty's up 6 nothing in front of the home crowd at Williams Stadium, a 20,000-seat stadium that's expanding to 25 next year. And I think they're going to pack it out. Alex Probert, who was perfect 4-4 four of four last week, in for the extra point. And he's 5-5 five of five on the season. We wondered how this game would start. Liberty, of course, a bit tired after a unique travel experience back from Baylor, which we'll share with you later. But they did not look tired at all on that opening drive. Now, it all started with that kick return from Frankie Hickson. 
got the crowd into it, got a little momentum going the Flames' way. And the offensive line, a group that was much maligned this offseason, they struggled a year ago, and they were fantastic at Baylor. And once again here early on, creating running lanes and creating time for Buckshot to sit in that pocket and survey the field. B.J. Farrow, number 82, with the uh, touchdown reception from Buckshot. Buckshot looks on, the king right between them. As you check out Liberty's sideline and a little water here early. Liberty now getting ready to kick off. The Flames kicker who just get that extra point a moment ago is number 10, Alex Probert. The sophomore sensation has a powerful and accurate leg. Ten kickoffs at Baylor. Seven of them went for touchbacks. The All-American is from Landover, Minnesota. And back to receive the kickoff for Moorhead State, a very young special teams unit. But Tarver returned to kickoff last Saturday, 80 yards. But he's just a sophomore. Washington and Tarver are back. This one in the end zone will be taken by Tarver. Ten and no further as he slammed to the ground. Nice tackle by Liberty's number 31, Elijah Benton. Little hesitation bringing that one out. Probably regrets it now as the special teams unit closed in quickly. Moorhead State is led by its quarterback, number one, Lawson Page. After playing backup quarterback for three seasons behind Austin Gay Halfer, who set all kinds of passing records at Moorhead State, Page got his first start last Saturday. He completed his first 15 passes in a row. He's a smart, crisp passer, a dual-threat quarterback, and he'll likely throw to 10 or 11 different receivers in this game. This is his fourth year in the program, and he's the guy who's leading the Eagles offense. He has to start at the 10. First out in 10 for Moorhead State. First pass of the game is complete to Robinson, and Robinson is wrapped up just as he caught that ball. Jeremy Peters was there. Yeah, Jeremy Peters absolutely destroyed the blocker, Landon Hurst. Just knocked him out of the way to blow that play up. Not surprised to see Moorhead State come out with some quick passing, try to get their guy Page into a little bit of a rhythm, but Jeremy Peters was having none of it. A line there that's bigger and stronger than previous years. Two young running backs with 100-plus yard games last Saturday. You'll see Holbrook and London in and out. It'll be critical today for this Eagle offense. Second down and 11 following the loss of one yard. They'll throw about 60% of the time, but handing off there a loss of three yards on the play as McKinney got in there to tackle Holbrook yeah Solomon McGinty coming on the blitz as well already we're seeing a lot more aggressive play from this defense than we did at Waco we expected that certainly the competition level a little bit different but you're seeing those linebackers active getting into the backfield and creating havoc Jalen McKinney the Lake Wells, Florida sophomore. There are 14 players on this Flames team that are from the state of Florida. Their families are back, as you could imagine, or uh, having evacuated with a hurricane headed uh, their way. And uh, you just have to wonder if they're distracted. It certainly would be a stressful situation for most. We'll see the Flames so far seem very, very focused on this game. This is to the goal. Third down. Boy, and it goes from bad to worse for Moorhead State. Delay of game now. A little confusion on the Liberty side as well. They only had 10 guys on the field. Ran the 11th out there late. You see their defensive alignment right now. They'll plan to just rush three, dropping everybody back on third and 18. Basically a prevent style defense here, keeping everything in front of them to not allow that first down to be made. Liberty gave up 500 plus yards to Baylor. The coaches want to see some improvement tonight. Brown, of course, making his eighth consecutive start uh, in this game. Devontae Brown. Page, his pass caught to the 12 yard line, but it's going to be a punting situation. First with that catch, and once again, it's McGinty who's there. Yeah, I love the pursuit from Greg Story as well. The big fella on the D-line turning and running, 6'5", 345. He was able to get downfield to help make that tackle. So this defense, you like the energy and the aggressiveness they're playing with here in the early stages. Brad Boone is coming in to punt it. He actually had two punts last Saturday and averaged 63.5 yards a punt. That's not bad. No, not at all. 
Damian King is back to receive it for Liberty. He's going to let it go out of bounds at midfield. And it's always fun to see where the officials actually mark it. It'll be marked at the 49-yard line. The Big South would like to thank Hardee's. Hardee's is a contributing partner to the Big South Network. There's a look at Turner Gill, Liberty's head coach in his sixth season, took the Flames to their first NCAA FCS playoff appearance. That was 2014. First, he was hired to take the Flames program to FBS. That transition is underway. Timeout on the field. 11.05 to go in the first quarter. Liberty's up 7-0. Be free to be you. The freedom to drive what you want to drive, wear what you want to wear, and bank where you want to bank. At Carter Bank & Trust, you'll find the freedom to bank the way you like. Personal service with a smile, face-to-face -face from people that know you. And with services like our no-fee debit card, lifetime free checking, and over 100 convenient locations, you're free to bank your way. Carter Bank & Trust, the freedom to be you. Marriott is the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. For the best rates, you can book directly with Marriott by heading to BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott, and you'll support Big South student athletes in the process. That's BigSouthSports.com slash Marriott. Hey, Matt, let's look at the keys to the game. Yeah, first we talk about for Liberty what they need to do. No letdown. Well, there hasn't been one. They came out firing. Also, take away the big play. They gave up some big plays down the field to Baylor. They need to limit that here today. And for Morad State, pressure the quarterback. Don't let Buckshot just sit back there and have all day to find all those weapons that he has at his disposal. And also, the Eagles need to establish the run. They had two guys go over 100 yards on the ground a week ago. They need to get the run game going here as well, and especially on first down to avoid some third long situations like we just saw in their first drive. Buckshot Calvert leads his team out onto the field. He's one of one, 25 yards and a touchdown just a moment ago. 49 yards away from the end zone. The handoff goes to Carrington Mosley, and Mosley picks up about six yards on first down. Well, you heard Miles talk about Mosley here in the pregame. This is a big fella that runs hard, and when he gets a full head of steam, it takes one, two, maybe three guys to get him to the ground. There's a look at that defensive unit, a four-man front, only allowed 14 points of their season opener. Mosley, back to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard gain. It'll be third down. Well, this is where Liberty had so much success to the surprise, really, of everybody. On third down, they were 15 of 24 converting on third downs against Baylor. And in fact, at one time, late in that ballgame, 10 straight third down conversions. You want to win? You come through in the clutch on third down, and that's exactly what they did a week ago. Third down three for the Flames. Buckshot's pass to oh. King. Nice move. 40. First down. 25. 20. 10. What a move to the end zone. Touchdown. Are you kidding me? 42 yards. Touchdown. Damian King, the junior from St. Petersburg, Florida, does his family proud. That man ran 80 yards to go 42, didn't he? Boy, weaving in and out, splitting a couple of defenders, and then he just had that dude on skates the rest of the way. That's Braylon Cook, an all-conference defensive back. He had him all kinds of turned around, and what a start to the season for Damian King. There's Damian King on the sideline as he uh, gets congratulated by the team. Alex Probert comes in to attempt the extra point. And it's looking good for the sophomore. He was the Big South Conference Special Teams Player of the Week after tying Liberty and Big South Conference records with four of four field goals in a game. Another timeout. We haven't even played five minutes yet at Williams Stadium, and King makes it a 14-zip game.
some things become traditions. Thank you for making yours Foster Fuels. Touchdown or reception and the yards after the catch and Liberty's on top 14 nothing. Hey, you'll want to visit BigSouthSports.com and stay current with everything in the Big South Conference. News, results, stats, standing, so much more. You can vote on the UTS fan poll, watch the Hardy's star plays, and enjoy video features profiling student athletes from across the conference. Plus, of course, free live streaming events throughout the year like this game on the Big South Network. Remember, the source for all your conference information is BigSouthSports.com. Let's watch that touchdown strike as uh, Buckshot's already got two touchdown passes. Yeah, it was a great play design. It looked like they were setting up a screen on the right side of the field to the running back. Instead, they come back to the left. Damian King does the rest. A kid that only played in six games last year because he was injured. He had six catches all of last season. He had 10 against Baylor. And then his first one here, he takes it to the house. You see the explosive type of player Damian King is. We saw flashes of that in his freshman season. Hurt last year. Good to see him back out there, healthy. And man, how many weapons does this Liberty offense have? <laughs> I think we're going to find out yeah. here tonight. That's uh, Tarver, 15-yard line, and he goes down at the 21. Again, a nice tackle by the Flames special teams. It was Remington Green, the freshman, who made the stop right there. 9.56 to go in the opening quarter. The Eagles are down 14 to nothing and so far have just been shut down offensively. Yeah, they have to find a way to kind of settle down here. You, you just want to move the chains, pick up that first first down, get something positive going here. You don't need to try to come out and get it all back at once. Yeah, you're down 14 nothing in a hurry, but you need to settle in, run your offense, and just move those chains. Get a couple of first downs. No reason to start panicking and trying to sling it all over the field. Page keeps it, but uh, nowhere to go. He was smacked right at the line of scrimmage, yeah, so that'll bring up second down. Jawan Wells in the backfield, another guy. We didn't hear his name called a lot against Baylor. You know, he's motivated to come out here today and make some plays. One of the better defensive linemen in the nation. There's a look at Liberty's defensive line, the linebackers with McGinty so important, the senior leadership there. And in the secondary, Chris Turner. Remember Chris Turner last week came yeah. in to start the second half, picked off a pass, and went to the end zone. Second down 10 for the Eagles. Page pass out of bounds. His receiver was about five or six yards out of bounds. Washington, he was closely contested by Peters. Yeah, Peters just rode him into the Liberty bench, essentially. And we talked about King, Damian King, coming back off an injury plague year. So, too, is Jeremy Peters, a guy that is really going to be key for this Liberty defense. He's healthy, and he's playing his best football so far in his career. Third down for Moorhead State. The Eagles are 1-0 and to start the year. They beat Kentucky Christian, an NAIA school, last Saturday, 56-14. to But they're looking for their first points against the Flames. Moorhead State plays in the Pioneer League, a non-athletic scholarship league. Page gets to the outside, has the first down, and slides to the 34-yard line. Yeah, there you saw the athleticism from Page. Jalen McKinney was coming up, thought he had the angle on him, and Page shifted gears and blew right by him. He's an athletic kid. He was their Wildcat quarterback a year ago, ran seven touchdowns, ran for seven touchdowns, didn't actually throw a pass a season ago. So you're seeing the athleticism that he can use there, and they may want to use more of it as we get into this ball game. Page with the crisp pass out to Hurst, but Hurst couldn't hold on to it. Incomplete. It'll bring up second down. Hurst uh, from Frankfurt, Kentucky, had five catches last Saturday, averaged about 12 yards a catch. 
Lawson Page. You know, he completed 91 percent of his passes yeah. in that game last week. He's two of four, eight yards in this one. It's tough to complete that percentage against air, against nobody, and he did it against a real life defense. Handoff went to Holbrook, and Holbrook loses a yard or two. Holbrook, one of those redshirt freshman running backs who had over 100 yards last week. Well, this Liberty Rush defense struggled mightily a year ago, giving up over five yards per carry. Last week, they gave up seven and a half per carry to Baylor. Let's see if they can bounce back today. They've got, got something to prove that they can stop the run compared to what we saw a season ago from this group. The Eagles are one of two on third down conversions in this game. This will be third down and 11. Page, good protection. It picked off at the 40-yard line. 25-20. McKinney out of bounds. Jalen McKinney with the interception. And Liberty's defense has two in the first quarter. McKinney read that perfectly, staring into the backfield, watching the eyes of the quarterback, moving that way with him, stepped right in front, and picked it off. McKinney getting the start in place of Lucas Irons, who's out today. And boy, does it pay dividends right away. Great field position now set up for this Liberty offense as if they've needed it, needed it so far. There he is coming to the sideline and Turner Gill probably feeling pretty good. He's got four conference titles in five years, best known as a Heisman Trophy finalist back in 1983. He's in his sixth year. That's Carrington Mosley who gets back to the original line of scrimmage. This is the ninth meeting between these two programs. Flames are five and three all time against the Eagles. Liberty's never lost to Moorhead State in Lynchburg, but the last time they played was 1991, 26 years ago. Second down. Buckshot to the end zone. AGG can't get to it. Yeah, we've gone this long without mentioning Antonio Gandy Golden. It's, he, we haven't heard from him yet in this ball game. We've seen some of the other weapons. And anytime you have one on one on Gandy Golden, you like your chances. Couldn't quite snag that one with the one hand, though. Luke Croucher did a nice job defensively. Third down 11 for the Flames. Buckshot. The Flames spread out. Taking their time. Five seconds. Buckshot again. Over the middle. King can't hold it. Drops it right at the end zone. He was open. It's going to be fourth down. Yeah, that's one that he's going to be thinking about when he's laying in bed tonight. <laughs> that should have been his second touchdown of the night, and it was created in large part because Carrington Mosley did a fantastic job picking up the rusher, giving Buckshot an extra second to deliver that strike, and King just couldn't haul it in. Alex Probert is going to come in to attempt what will be a 33-yard field goal. Last year he was in the top 10 in all FCS kickers. This 33-yarder is good. So it's been all Liberty here in the first quarter. 7.20 to play in the opening quarter. The Liberty Flames in their final season in Division I FCS. They're off to a pretty good start. Sodexo, global leader in quality of life services, is committed to creating exceptional experiences at Liberty University. Enjoy delicious concessions as we cheer on the Flames. Visit us in our many dining locations for both campus and community. And join us in our efforts towards sustainability and fighting hunger in Central Virginia. Sodexo is changing the face of college dining. For more information, visit libertydining.com. I'm here in Lynchburg on a mission to find out if people know where they can be safe and buy smart at Craft Hyundai. Hi, hi, can I ask you a quick question? Uh, sure. Do you know where Craft Hyundai is on Lakeside Drive? Oh, that's across from Sheets. Do you know where Craft Hyundai is? On Lakeside Drive? That's right, Lakeside Drive. Do you know where Craft Hyundai is on Lakeside Drive? Um, is that the one across from the Sheets? It is. It's across from Sheets on Lakeside Drive. And um, cute dog, by the way. Be safe. Buy smart at Craft Sunday on Lakeside. All right, Ryan, tell us which marking you 
Welcome back to LFSN's coverage of Liberty University football. Flames fans, Liberty football season tickets are now on sale. Be part of the 2017 season. Experience all the excitement of Flames football Saturdays. The Flames home schedule features six exciting games beginning September 9th today and continuing next week. Season tickets start at just $69. You can visit LibertyFlames.com for more information or call 434-582-SEAT to order your Liberty football season tickets. There's nothing like game day. It was great to see Alex Probert hit that field goal just a moment ago. He was a factor last week, of course, and Bobby, you spoke with him this week. Yeah, you know, I asked him, when when did he decide that he wanted to be a, a kicker? And he said, you know, it actually started as a joke in seventh grade when his coach said he lined up everyone on the team and he said, whoever kicks it the farthest is going to be our kicker. So, guys, his buddy next to him ended up kicking it two yards farther than he did. Ever since that day, he started practicing, got himself a kicking coach, and he began honing in on his craft from there. I asked Coach Gill what he he likes so much about his kicker. He says he likes his work ethic, his constant determination to get better every single day. And guys, that work ethic he developed in seventh grade is definitely paying off for him as a Liberty Flame. Oh my, yeah, he is a hard worker. I remember in the off season he was out kicking uh, and he posted on social media. I think he had like a 70-some yard field goal <laughs> just out there practicing. So no telling what he can do as Tarver returns it to about the 15. Yeah, Liberty, you think about how many college programs around the country are just dying for good field goal kickers. And you go from Lunsford to Probert, two kids that can really get it done. Liberty has been very fortunate that they have recruited so well in, in that regard. There he is over on the sideline. There's Turner, the punter. He doesn't get a lot of work. He didn't last week and not this week yet. Yeah, punter's the one position, right, where you don't want to be called on. If, you're, <laughs> if, if, if you don't go out there, things are, must be going pretty good. Hunter Winstead was standing right there uh, with them. And uh, Winstead, of course, the long snapper. He's an All-American. So great special teams this year for Liberty. Lawson Page, where's number one? He's the quarterback for Moorhead State, and it's first down in 10, 7.15 to go in the first quarter. Pass incomplete, intended for Washington. Thrown just a little bit behind him, and King there. That's David King, the backup linebacker from Stewart's Draft, Virginia. Yeah, and he was about a step away from making a similar play that Jalen McKinney made on the last possession. He nearly cut in front of that and made a pick. You know, the Eagles used to be part of the Ohio Valley Conference. Uh, that was back in the 80s, an intense series between these two programs. But then they moved to uh, the Patriot League and sort of changed their program goals. And Liberty's just the dominant one here. Penalty marker thrown, and it looks like it's going to go against uh, Peters, perhaps some interference. We'll have to see what the officials call the pass interference. Number two, defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, so Peters called for that as Washington was the receiver. Yeah, it looked like there was some grabbing going on. A little bit before we took that play there, there was some grabbing. He did turn and was able to break it up at the last moment, but there well, the ball was in the air, kind of hanging on to the arms of the receiver. Liberty had eight penalties against uh, in the Baylor game, and uh, the coaches were saying how they wanted to get rid of those penalties. They came at crucial moments, which made the Flames have to settle for field goals, and so they don't want that. False start, number 60, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. They don't want that to be a pattern. Now, the Eagles had 14 yeah. penalties in their season opener, so it can be worse than eight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> both these coaching staffs, I'm sure, preach to their team about limiting the penalties here this week. That one went against uh, the left guard, uh, Josh Poe. So it's first down and 15 for Moorhead State. Page caught from behind and tackled inside the 25-yard line. Brown got there first. The edge rushers for the Flames and, and Brown and Jawan Wells, so athletic, so quick. It can be tough to get around the edge against these guys, and you saw it here. So Devontae Brown not fooled with the fake handoff, and then the closing speed able to wrap him up for a loss. Second down and 17 for the Eagles. They had 625 yards of offense last week. They've been held to eight yards passing 
five yards rushing for a total of 13 midway through the first quarter. And a timeout being taken. Timeout. Morehead State. Their first. And it's interesting, Matt, that uh, they do play in the Patriot League. It's a non-athletic scholarship league, but that doesn't mean they don't. these players don't have scholarships. They have other kinds of scholarships, academic scholarships, need-based scholarships, et cetera, but they don't have the traditional football scholarships, and uh, they play in that Patriot League. Uh, same thing that when Liberty played Jacksonville University Dolphins, the yeah. second game of last year, they're in that same league. Yeah, the Pioneer Football League, and uh, Liberty worked over Jacksonville pretty good a year ago and uh, so far so good against this Pioneer Football League foe as well. As we told you, uh, the Eagles had 625 yards uh, last week. Liberty 585 yards of offense and 40 eight points against Baylor. I think everybody is still just we're still in shock about that <laughs> game. I mean, it was a perfectly played game. Of course, Coach Gill just out coached the other team as well. It was uh, just amazing. It was a great win for Liberty in the program. Page's pass at the 30 yard line. It's going to be third down 11. Weish making that catch. Yeah, just was able to sneak that through. Chris Turner lunging almost got a hand on it. Turner had that interception to start the second half against Baylor. These are the spots you do not want to find yourselves in. You're more at state third and long when these rushers for Liberty can just pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. They're going to take another look at that reception, see if it was in fact a catch. Maybe a good thing, obviously depending on, on the outcome here, but for Morehead State to be able to kind of catch their breath, like, almost like a timeout. Looked like on that replay, that one may have hit the turf. Yep, looks like it definitely hit the ground, so that one should come back and make it about third and 17. The officials here in Lynchburg are from the Atlantic Coast Conference and also the Big South Conference and the uh, replay official. Wasn't it Russ who came over and said hi Rusty, to us? Rusty Aker. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, right here, the ball hit the ground. The pass is incomplete. Rusty's one for one. He got, he got that one right. The 24 yard line. We'll give him a thumbs up in the booth down the hall. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. He's two two booths away from us and uh, those officials have a tough job, don't they? Get uh, we get to watch the replay and, and second guess them and evaluate them constantly. Some good shots from our LFSN crew. You can clearly see the nose of the football hit the ground and brings up now third and 17. There's the head coach Rob. Tenure, fifth year as head coach, spent previous 12 seasons as an assistant coach with the Eagles, so he knows the program. Page in trouble, chased. Wells has a hand, but he's pulled down by the Flames. Number 44 got there, Devontae Brown. Flames rushed just three that time. They dropped everybody back, and still they were able to create pressure with just those three rushers. That's impressive, and Devontae Brown there to clean it up once Page was flushed from the pocket. So this defense, you know, a lot of talk, you know, was Baylor, you know, was the offense, was their offense just that good? The defense struggled some last week. Obviously, we know Baylor has a lot of offensive talent, so that was a big reason why this defense gave up some yards and some points a week ago. We're starting to see more of what we expect out of a Robert Wimberly group here so far this evening. Hunting situation almost blocked. Bounces around the 40-yard line and picked up. That's Stubbs, DJ Stubbs, just a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, who picked it up off the turf. Attention all Flames Club members. Make sure you mark your calendars for the football luncheons on October 13 and November 10. Not a Flames Club member? Then you can visit libertyflames.com slash Flames Club to become a member and join us for these great events. You know, there was the Flames Club luncheon yesterday and uh, it's always fun because you get a chance to hear from some of the athletes. Uh, of course, Turner Gill was there, Solomon McGinty, Hunter Winstead and Michael Henderman were there to talk and answer questions. All kinds of funny stories. These athletes are smart. I think all of them working on their master's degrees. Just uh, just amazing group of athletes, uh, not only on the field, but in the classroom. Buck 
Rashad Calvert down the field. McGinty out of bounds. G oh, excuse me, that was Gandy Golden, wasn't it? Yep. Gandy Golden down the sideline and just a little bit overthrown. We're not used to a pass not being complete. It was Cook who was there defensively. Yeah, again, you like the play design, a, a fake to the left, the play action. Allows Buckshot then to roll out. He loaded up, but that ball just sailing out of bounds on him, not giving Gandy Golden much of an opportunity to snag it. Handoff. Hickson. Hickson picking up about six yards. Yeah, it'll be good to see if they can get him going on the ground here in this ball game. He was bottled up pretty well against Baylor. Carrington Mosley's the one that had the big day running the football for Liberty a week ago, but we've seen what Hickson can do. Smaller, quicker back, and also catch the ball out of the backfield. Buckshot, quick pass, complete to B.J. Farrow, and he's down at the 44. Liberty first down before he was tripped up. Well, that was Brandon Duncan, the defensive back, who showed his hand too early. He was coming on a blitz, leaving Farrow open, and he was creeping in there before the snap. Buckshot was aware of it, saw it, and then just lofted it up and over the top as he tried to come crashing in. Easy throw and catch to B.J. Farrow. Cook, an all-conference, all-Patriot League cornerback. The Eagles with two really good cornerbacks, Cook and Duncan. So a penalty going against the Eagles here. It's going to move it up five yards. I think I said the Patriot League. My apologies. It's the Pioneer League. Ooh. 30-35-30 and pulled down at the 26-yard line. Matthews doing some dancing out there. Goodness, one on 11, huh? He shook about everybody wearing white at some point on that play. But you see the quickness, the explosiveness, and the shiftiness. Goodness, quick feet, able to make something out of nothing. Buckshot. Over the middle, caught, and dropped, incomplete. Obafin caught that, but he was hit hard just as he made the catch, and it's ruled an incomplete pass. Yeah, the freshman almost coming up with his first collegiate reception. Good throw under duress from Buckshot, but the freshman Obafin, who this staff likes a lot at the tight end position, an athletic kid, just unable to hang on to it as he turned right into the defender. Quick pass, caught at the 30-yard line. King, 20, 15, out of bounds, right at the 10. Dance, pushing King out of bounds. Boy, Damian King, just the elusiveness that he showed. Good blocking on the edge from Gandy Golden as well. That's something this wide receiver group takes great pride in. First down, buckshot, incomplete, almost intercepted. Number three, that's uh, Canoe, who, uh, well, he just didn't catch it. Yeah, Saeed Canoe was there. I don't know if there's a little miscommunication between Buckshot and his receiver because he kind of threw that up into no man's land, and Canoe nearly flagged it down for what would have been a huge play for Moorhead State. Buckshot has not thrown an interception this season. Pass to the corner. It is caught. For the touchdown. touchdown, Gandy Golden with the touchdown reception. It's not fair, Mike. It's just not fair. <laughs> he's too big. He's too strong. The defensive back was on him initially, and he basically just shoved him to the turf. <laughs> I think that's Chauncey Johns, who he just brushed away. Wow. Goodness, 6'4", big body, good hands. Gandy Golden is a handful at all levels, as we saw a week ago. Buckshot already has three touchdown passes. Sports Center may be calling Buckshot again before this game is over. <laughs> they may want to talk to him as soon as this one ends. <laughs> so Liberty's in for the extra point. We've got Alex Probert. It's a little bit quiet, and he makes it look easy. 
He's perfect on the season. And Liberty just uh, really picking up where it left off down in Waco, Texas. No letdown so far. No, and, and they're getting whatever they want. You're seeing guys, you know, the short pass game, catch it, make plays after the catch with their legs. You're seeing Buckshot deliver well-placed balls down the field. The running game, been a little quiet, I guess, if you if you want to knock it a little bit, I, although I say that, they're averaging seven yards a carry. I guess the Kentori Matthews runs have certainly helped. But they're getting whatever they want offensively, and they're getting it from a variety of guys. You've seen B.J. Farrell make his mark already. Andy Golden doing what he does. Damian King flashing some real speed. I, I mean, good luck. I don't know how you stop this offense right now with the way they're firing on all cylinders. I agree with you on that. Liberty, of course, uh, only had a 2% chance, 2% chance of beating Baylor. You don't buy that stuff, do you, Tilly? 2%. You don't buy that stuff. 2%, the yeah. mathematicians. Yeah. 2%. 33-point uh, underdogs at Baylor. And, uh, you know, Baylor's not used to losing to FCS teams. The only other FCS team they ever lost to was Lamar, and that was 1981. So Liberty just, uh, well, just shocked everybody. I've gotten texts and emails from Baylor folks all over the country just uh, congratulating the Flames program on that, that big win. This one will not be taken Turk out of the end zone. end zone. Turk just uh, stayed in there. That was pretty smart, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think he's learned his lesson. We might see a lot of different flames in the second half. What do you think? We might see some second, third, fourth string uh, players. We got a 24 nothing lead, and we haven't even gotten to the second quarter yet. Yeah, that's a good thing. You know, maybe you get a chance to get some of those younger guys out there, get them some reps in a game like this. You're going to need that depth as you get into this season and certainly as you look down the road. So, yeah, keep the pedal to the floor here in the first half, and then you worry about that stuff after the break. Rob Tenure, fifth year as head coach for Moorhead State. He told me this week that his philosophy for his players is think half as much, play twice as fast. But Liberty is just too fast for this Eagle team, and offensively they can't get any traction. That was London, who last week had 133 yards rushing, but he just couldn't get past McKinney. Second down, nine. Liberty moving to 6 p.m. Eastern time games this season after normally around seven or so, so Glad you could join us for your dinner hour. London, maybe a yard. It's going to be third now. McGinty again. Under two minutes to go in the quarter. You know, this uh, Moorhead State team is the only state school at the FCS level that plays non-athletic scholarship football, so it makes them uh, quite unique. The other such football programs are private schools. And they really made that transition in the 90s. They uh, joined their conference, I think, in 2001. But uh, back in the 80s, boy, there were a lot of intense games between the two programs. Some movement across the line. I think Liberty will be penalized Everybody there as McKinney. Threw their flag. <laughs> as McKinney was a little bit too fast, a little bit too quick. Our head referee is, uh, again, from the ACC, Stuart Mullins. There are two fouls on the play, both by number four <laughs> defense offside. That penalty will be declined. Personal foul, face mask, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Well, that is going to uh, make your head coach a little frustrated. Two penalties on the same play. And you give Moorhead State a first down and give their offense a little bit of life. Well, he was determined. What you could just tell he was going to do whatever it took to bring the player down. But just a little bit too much. First down and 10, 106 to go in the first quarter. Liberty's up 24 0. Signals coming in from the sideline. Five seconds on the play clock. Got to hurry. Yeah, timeout. They almost got their second delay of game of the afternoon. Timeout. 
More at stake. They're second. 30 seconds. Timeout here being taken by Moorhead State. Moorhead State with 11,000 students in Kentucky. You know, this school is really old. They were founded in 1887. Wow. 1887. Liberty will be in action here at home against uh, next Saturday, of course, as the season continues and the Flames will be uh, playing Indiana State. Then on the road at Jacksonville State, back home to host St. Francis. And, you know, homecoming is the middle of October against Kennesaw State. Hey, a lot of folks watching are going to want to be here for homecoming. Indiana State next week's opponent trailing Tennessee as we speak. 35-7, so they're going to be coming off a uh, tough loss at 0-2 coming into that matchup next week. Page downfield. Boy, he was hit just as he released that one. Sutherland, the intended receiver, it was overthrown, but wow. Wells, I think, was in his face. Yeah, I'd like to see that again because from up here, it looked like there may have been helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. No flag on that one, but Wells came in high and really put a lick on Page. Let's see if you can see it right here. Right under the chin. That was close. Got to be careful this day and age, especially. Better further review. And they're going to look at it. Ooh, I think they heard you. I, do I need to talk quieter? I don't know. Rusty but, you know, heard you. <laughs> you saw him come in high. It was an incomplete pass. I don't know about that call, man. I think that's a little bit too touchy. I know they're calling it different this year. But listen, you're playing football. This Here is physical. Go. I agree. You Here know what go. I'm saying? I, I agree, but, but from a ref's perspective. Of course you agree. You're a defensive player. Yeah, but yeah. I definitely agree. But from a ref's perspective, I think they might they might get them on this one, unfortunately. Let's go back last week. Flames got lucky with a targeting call there. Yeah, I, did you agree with that one? I think he's going to. Yes, I did. I did. I think he's going to be watching a little bit the different. rest of this one. But still, that's, that's touchy. I mean, how else can you tackle? You know, if you're coming in there like you're supposed to be taught, bending over, yeah, right. he had good form. In right. that situation, a quarterback standing tall in the pocket, you've got a big target After area. further review, there was targeting on the play. By no. Number wow. Defense. Wow. Number 54 is disqualified. What? 15 yard penalty. Wow. Automatic. First down. Not. I, I think that's in the shot. right call. And you take a look at, at the rule here with the crown of the helmet. Head or neck area. Now, it's the crown of the helmet. Helmet is what we're talking about here. Hit him right up under the chin. Got a piece of the face mask in, in the top of the helmet. I mean, yeah, you may not like the way they call it these days, but I think that was a pretty easy one for the officials to call. No, I, I completely disagree with you on there because he had the good form, and there's hardly anything else he could have done. Oh, come I mean, on now. outside of tripping body. the guy, I, I think he numbers. did lead with his head a little bit. Just How else are you supposed it? to tackle? You know, I, I mean, I agree, but from a... From a legal standpoint, he, he led with his head. You got to get him out of the game. No, you guys are crazy. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is football. This is supposed to be physical. This is not like softball or volleyball. This is football. That pass is caught at the 35-yard line. And uh, I'll tell you guys what it should not have been called. I have studied that rule endlessly. And I hate that rule, by the way. And it needs to be changed by the NCAA because it's too hard for the officials to make the right judgment on that call. But it was, it was his face mask, wasn't it, that hit him? Uh, now, the call last week against uh, that happened at Baylor, that was the target. Please reset the game clock to 36 seconds. 36 seconds, please. Well, that, was, that was, that uh, was, should have been. The play is an incomplete pass. Play is under further review. Boy, now our boy Rusty's getting a workout. Oh, but, my goodness. You know, whatever you think of the call, this drive has been made off of personal fouls. There is no review on the play. Rusty, out. Rusty's out for a snack. He's like, hey, don't call me back already. I just had to review one. Give me a break. But you, you had the face mask after the offsides on Jalen McKinney. That allowed them to get a first down. Then you get the targeting going against Jawan Wells. Puts them in flames territory. So Liberty is hurting themselves more than Moorhead is hurting them at this point. The intent of that targeting rule is really good. It's just the application of it is nearly impossible for anybody to get right. Second down 10. Pass is caught right at the 36-yard line. That's a nice seven-yard gain. 
for this uh, Eagles offense. Sugar Ray Weish with that catch. It's going to be third down. Final seconds of the first quarter. We've been playing about 50 minutes. Looks like uh, the Eagles are deciding if they're going to let the clock expire. And they do. Not sure it was intentional, but they just ran out of time. That's the end of the first quarter. Yes, it is. A very long first quarter. <laughs> we could have a four hour game if we keep going like this. A few more replays, maybe, and uh, well. One quarter behind us, Liberty shutting out Moorhead State 24 nothing in the home opener. And it's game on, fourth and 18. Friends rushing the party in under an hour. Supermom's headed for the snack aisle. Ooh, this one's a scramble. It's all come down to this. Look at that air. She's got it. And there's that signature double pour. Crisp chips, crunchy pretzels. This crowd's gone crazy. We did it, honey. Best party ever. Yeah, we did it. Bucks, go for the glory. Go Lighting. We make it happen. Hey there. Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia. The Flames currently up 24-0 right now. Guys, DJ, he's angry. He wanted to first talk about the Flames' quick start, but we're going to talk about Juwan Wells here. You don't agree with this call, though. Absolutely not. If it's in the rules, how, like, tell me, how it's is he supposed to tackle It's the interpretation of the rules, and I think this was a bad interpretation, because if you look at his forearm, he did not use his head as... A, uh, as a targeting kind of method or anything like that. How else can you tackle him? Look at this. How can you teach him not to violate that rule? You can't. I mean, this is football. We're not Miles? playing powder puff. We're not playing basketball. Right. It's football. Now, now, let me be clear. Let me clarify my statement from earlier, okay? <laughs> I don't believe he should have been suspended. <laughs> However, I believe that as soon as they brought it back up, you knew he was going to be gone. I don't think there's a better way for a player to tackle at that point. Right. However, the rules, rules are in place. Well, for that was a, a bad interpretation. Is this one of these situations where in October we're not going to hear about this as much? It's just everybody's so conscious of it right I now? I do. Yeah. I do. And it's going to take a while for the referees to get used to the same news, but that, that's fake news, man. Fake news. All right, Mike and Matt. The second quarter underway on third down and three. Page uh, throwing incomplete. Well, at least DJ has cleared up which sport we're playing, so I think we're all on the same page there. We know it's not powder puff, it's not basketball, it's not volleyball, so we can all agree on that at least. <laughs> and then dealing with concussions is a very serious thing, and I think the intent is correct to try to change the rules somewhat, but still you got to remember, how else are you going to teach these guys to tackle. Right. You couldn't have taught him to tackle any better than that. And looking at that, his head wasn't down as he went to attack the quarterback. His head was up. His face was under his chin. But other yeah, than I that, thought it was, it was more of his was, forehead. Yeah, exactly. Right. It was totally his forehead, not his head underneath. It was not chin. used as a yeah. weapon to injure or to harm. Foster's 53-yard field goal is good. Oh. Andrew Foster, who's normally the kickoff specialist, not normally coming in for the extra points and the short field goals. What a distance for Foster, the uh, freshman from Knoxville, Tennessee. Where'd he come from? Well, I think you just said it, Knoxville, Tennessee. But you know, <laughs> they, these are all freshmen for their specialists. They don't really know what to expect from these kids. Foster making a claim maybe to win that job all the time. Foster preventing the shutout. Welcome back to the adventures of Rick Ram. We're here in the Blue Ridge Mountains, hot on the trail of the Central Virginia Bigfoot. First, I want to thank our sponsors, Billy Craft, Chrysler Dodge, Jeep Ram, for loaning us this beautiful Dodge Ram pick. Are you kidding me? Hey! Hey, come on now, that's a loader. Join us next week when we'll be on the hunt for the elusive Dodge Ram pickup.
Well, who left the keys in the truck? Join the conversation and get social with the Big South. You can learn new details about what's going on or share your own experiences as you join the always growing network of Big South fans on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and more. Plus, find and follow this year's new conference source for game updates and championship coverage via Twitter at Big South Game Day. Follow, watch, like, and share with the Big South Conference. And you can use that hashtag. Big South. Well, a little bit of red, a little glitter, some blue and white sprinkled in. And the Liberty fans 24 7. Marching band in the end zone this year. They're on the south end zone. Some new bleachers installed at that end, providing some music. Time to kick it off. Back to receive Hickson and Stubbs for Liberty and kicking it off right there. The unbelievable Andrew Foster who had just hit the 53 yard field goal a few moments ago. Hickson calling everybody off. It goes out of bounds at the one yard line. Wow what a leg he has. Moorhead State was really concerned coming into the year. They didn't have anybody to kick and it was just like anybody want to kick out of bounds kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed in the 35-yard line. First down. They were just looking for anybody to come in and kick for the team, and I think they found a kicker. Yeah, although he's not feeling too great right now. You go from the high of making that 53-yarder to the low of kicking it off out of bounds and a conversation with the head coach. So it's a roller coaster ride out there, Mike. <laughs> not going his way at the moment. Liberty up 24 to 3 just underway here in the second quarter. Liberty's home opener against Moorhead State. Mosley getting to the outside. Penalty marker thrown. He's out of bounds around the 49. Butler driving him out of bounds. A lot of penalties in this first half. And the officials gathering there. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Face mask, number 34, offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Mosley. Well, you don't see that a ton called on the offensive player. Gotcha. So he was using that arm on a stiff arm, must have grabbed on. Liberty has won five straight home openers, winning 14 of their last 15 home openers here at Williams Stadium and off to a great start here in the first half of this one. Buckshot trying to get away and he's sacked at the 20 yard line. Good defensive pressure that time by Draper and others to get in there and make that tackle. Looked like uh, Flores was there also. Well, all of a sudden this Moorhead State team feels like they have a little bit of new life. They make the field goal. Now they have Liberty backed up second and 26. 24 to 3 right now, but if they're able to get a stop, get a score, they can start they climb their way back in. Pass over the middle, incomplete at the 35 yard line. That was Spence Jones who had a touchdown in that Baylor game. Kid who is moving from quarterback to receiver this season, and they really think. He has a bright future at that position. It's just hard to crack the lineup with so much talent and depth that they have at that group. The Big South would like to thank Geico. Geico is a contributing partner to the Big South Network. Third down, 26. <laughs> Penalty marker. Yeah, top of your screen. Offside, number 39. Brandon Duncans. Five yard penalty. Just came Third across down. before the snap and just jammed BJ Farrell. Watch. Just gives a shot right to the chest. I guess if you're going to be offsides, you might as well put a lick on him. Now, did his helmet touch him at all? Oh, here we go. 
<laughs> Might need to have a replay. All right, third down, 19. Buckshot steps up, downfield, going long, open, caught, 10 5, touchdown, BJ Farrell. We missed you, BJ. Goodness. What a return. They can't believe it in the stands. <laughs> You see him there on the outside. Good job of Buckshot Calvert stepping up into the pocket, creating some space for himself, and then you know he has the cannon to sling it downfield. And another long touchdown strike from Calvert to Farrell. Illegal substitution. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. We will play the try. Another penalty, but that was a 76-yard touchdown pass from Calvert to B.J. Farrow. That's four touchdown passes by Buckshot here in the first half. Boy, imagine what would have happened in Waco if B.J. Farrow were playing, huh? <laughs> Are you suggesting the Flames would have won a blowout? No, no, no. no. <laughs> but boy, but he is a big-time player, and we have seen it and been reminded of it very quickly in this ballgame. Boy, he's so fast. I mean, he just outran the defender by at least five steps. Extra point good. Liberty now 31 to 3. Liberty is FBS bound the final season in the FCS and watch this. Liberty can do whatever it wants in the home opener. What's the big south? What's the big south? What's the big south? It's our home. It's our home. Rooted in excellence. Built from hard work. It's our backbone. An undeniable will. Driven to surpass our potential. It's our heart. Unbreakable bonds. And our journey. Striving for more. Determined to lead. Day in and day out. This is the Big South. Where winners are made. The Hardy Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardee's. The Hardee's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardee's. For the latest updates in New Look Big South merchandise, you can visit BigSouthStore.com now. Once there, you'll be able to gear up with an outstanding variety of officially licensed apparel and conference and school branded items. So get fully equipped for all your game day fun with the bigger and better online offerings at the BigSouthStore.com. We've been talking about the hurricane that's pressing toward Florida. It's all in the news, and Bobby, it's having an impact on this game, too. Yeah, guys, we've seen the devastation all week long down in Houston, now beginning in Florida, and there are 14 flames from the state of Florida who have been impacted by these storms. Todd Making being one of them, his family, Damian King and Brett Byers' family Charbert also down there, the as well we'll as position wide receiver coach uh, Kyle DeArmond. He explained his parents have boarded up their home and have also taken people in from their church. They said we just don't want to make sure we keep these families and friends in our prayers and thoughts as the storm passes through our nation, guys. Definitely, Bobby. It's a very serious situation down in Florida, and we saw in the Caribbean what uh, the hurricane did. And um, I know there's a lot of folks who've evacuated Florida, and some trying to ride it out. And uh, our prayers, and are certainly with all of those families that will be affected by that one, and also all the ones in uh, Houston and Texas, uh, Louisiana, who were impacted by Harvey. I mean, just what a terrible situation. And it's going to take months, years, really, for those folks to get back to a normal life. First down in 10, under 14 minutes to go in the half. Page, pass caught, 28-yard line to about the 35. That's a 10-yard gain there for the Eagles. Washington making that grab. It's a nice-looking play by Moorhead State. 
Tillman there on the tackle. Yeah, how quickly this turned around. You know, they got the field goal. They had Liberty backed way up. You started thinking maybe they've got a little bit of life here, and then boom, 76 yards later, it's looking like the route is back on. Gary and Beasley into the lineup with that carry. He transferred from East Kentucky University. He was the uh, third running back last Saturday. So he's getting some playing time for the first time in this game. Yeah, Morehead State playing without their leading rusher from a year ago. Trevor Jones suspended indefinitely on the squad. So there's some other guys really getting a chance to shine in his absence. Page catching the, or throwing it to Beasley who gets tripped up and loses a few. Yeah, and he's going to hear about it from the student section across the way. Turf Monster got it. Liberty looking for its first 2 and 0 start since the 2010 season, the year they beat Ball State, an FBS team. Liberty's really beefed up its schedule over the last decade, and September's have been quite challenging, but with the win over Baylor a week ago, and now uh, this game, and of course Liberty will have a tough time on the road at Jacksonville State in two Saturdays, but uh, they're off to a good start. Hope to go 2-0 after this one. Pressure being chased, caught and tackled at the 32-yard line. Liberty's defense looking really good right there. Number three, Ryan Davis, and Brown was also chasing. Yeah, again, you see the pursuit from the ends. Devante Brown showing the speed, basically running half the field there to track him down. Now those are those athletic defensive ends that the Flames feature, and these guys are just hungry to make some plays after being held pretty quiet a week ago. Boone in the punt in uh, his last punting situation. It was almost blocked. So we'll see if the Flames put on some pressure. DJ Stubbs waits for it at the 33 yard line. Nope. Rush at all that time. Stubbs retreating inside the 15. Makes a nice move, but cannot get away. It goes down at the 15, and that's where Liberty will start with 11.04 to go in the first half. You're going to want to stay with us at halftime. We'll get to hear from DJ, Miles, and Rhett. They seem to have a lot of strong opinions about replays. Yeah, you think? Replays not, all, not necessarily accurate, but strong. <laughs> so they'll, they'll well, bring that's it. Yeah. yeah, but you just disagreed with them <laughs> That's true. That. Maybe they'll break down the targeting rule and Maybe the, so. all of that, you know. Look at that over and Boy, over again. I'd love again. to hear that conversation again, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Liberty fans are something else. The student body section, uh, everybody's in red, and they fill up the far side of the field. Remember, this time next year, Liberty will grow from a stadium size of 20,000 to 25,000. They'll add another deck across the way, close in the south end zone. All part of the transition to FBS. Matthews. Driving. Number nine. Picks up about three yards. Kentori Matthews, the junior from Virginia Beach. Yeah, it's going to be interesting as the season goes along to see how the Flames incorporate him in the offense. Remember a season ago, they had a three running back group. Todd Macon went down with an injury. He's still supposed to come back, they hope, in a month or so. So how do they use him when he gets back? How do they use Matthews in the meantime? Matthews again tackled at the 25 yard line by Tarver. You know, I like having the, you know, the Flames fans will know, certainly from watching the Baylor game, but also this game, is that the jerseys now have the players' last names on the back. Broadcaster's like dream, right, Mike? Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, Buckshot said he, they went to the coaching staff in the offseason, said, could we do it? We put names on, and Turner Gill said, well, I, I can't think of a good reason to say no, so there you go. Simple as that. Matthews picking up three yards there and a first down. Buckshot Calvert, 6 of 12 passing here in the first half, 181 yards and four touchdowns. Buckshot 
pass complete, 36-yard line to the 40. Another Liberty first down as B.J. Farrow picks up 13. Yeah, B.J. already up over 120 yards receiving in this ball game. You see where he's improving as well. He's a great athlete. He can go up and make a play in traffic, but the route running is where he has improved a lot during his career. Caught from behind that time, Matthews tripped up at the 35-yard line, loses about six yards on the play. Great defense uh, by number 92, R.T. Sutherland. He's the right tackle out of Owensboro, Kentucky. Second down, 16. Buckshot, incomplete. Pass intended for Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald got the start against Baylor last week for Coach Turner Gill's team, but uh, with B.J. Farrow back in the lineup, he's sort of a second-string receiver now. Yeah, Fitzgerald, a great story. He actually came to Liberty and was playing intramurals. Some people, some players saw him and went to the coaching staff. They're like, man, this kid can play. Ended up walking on and goes from intramurals to starting at Baylor here to begin this season. So quite the career, quite the story for that young man. Third and long. Buckshot again over the middle. Incomplete. It was intended for Stubbs. It was right in his hands and he couldn't hold it. Yeah, looked like a pretty good throw. Ian Buckshot doing a good job of just sliding in the pocket. Offensive line holding up pretty well, but Buckshot also being aware of where the rush is coming from, able to just slide just a bit, keep the footwork sound, and deliver a good throw downfield. Unfortunate that it wasn't snagged. First time in the game we see the punter, Trey Turner. And Trey Turner averaged 40 yards a punt last uh, Saturday in that Baylor game in Waco, Texas. Landon Hurst waits for this one at the 20. High spiral punt. Fair catch called for. Hurst has it at the 19. What a great environment at Williams Stadium. It's a lot of fun. The countdown to the game and then the game itself played in a wonderful atmosphere as the Flames fans give it all they've got. The team has done the same. 31-3. sure you visit the Liberty Flames newly designed website at libertyflames.com. We've made it even easier for you to keep up with your favorite Flames teams and to stay up to date with all the latest scores and press releases. Check out libertyflames.com. 8.28 to go in the second quarter. Liberty's up 31-3 over Moorhead State. Liberty scored 48 points on the road at Baylor. And they're off to a good start here in this game. It won't be as easy next year. Liberty's home opener will be with Old Dominion. And the year after, in 2019, the Flames will host Syracuse. Yeah, what a great job they've done putting together this future schedule. You look at so many ACC opponents, some SEC opponents, some big time opponents coming up for the Flames in the next few years. Beasley outside and steps out of bounds after a couple of yards. Yeah, Beasley, an interesting kid. You mentioned he played at Eastern Kentucky before transferring here. He played receiver at Eastern Kentucky in his freshman year. He had 259 yards receiving, so he was a real weapon for them early. 
they really had some high expectations for him. But eventually things kind of changed for him there, and he ended up coming here to this Moorhead squad and uh, gives them a real weapon in the running back position, a quick kid uh, out of that spot for them, and a guy with some big play potential. Second down, eight. Page pass, nobody's there. Boy, he took a lick on the end of that one. Trying to hang tall in the pocket. I think that may have been Tolan Avery that gave him a real shot right after he let go of that football. Christian Robinson sort of looked up and said, whoops. I'm not sure if he was supposed to run a little bit farther or what, but it was at least 20 yards past it. Lawson Page in this game is 5 of 13 for 20 yards. He's thrown one interception. Third down eight. Dumps it off complete at the 25 and to the 29-yard line. Beasley. Yeah, that's going to be close. Tackle made by uh, Bradley. They're going to take a look at it. Officials timeout for a measurement. Beasley, I think, had a chance if he had just gotten north and south as soon as he caught that ball to pick up the first down. Instead, he was tackled very close to the sticks. They're going to take a look at it. And from where we sit, it looks like he might be just short. Look, that's why they call me Eagle Eye Mike. Yeah, you got you it. Know? Yeah, you were exactly right. So decision time. Now for Rob Tenure. Down 31 to 3, midway through the second quarter. They're going to go. We remember we saw Turner Gill go for it on his own 30 in that Baylor game. Yeah. I saw him this week, and he said, "You like that? Did you like that when I went for it on fourth down? You didn't think I'd do it, did you?" <laughs> I said, "Hey, got a little bit of a gambler, and yeah, I don't mind it." Morehead State uh, is one of one on fourth down conversions. They did it last week, so they'll try to see what they can do here. If they're not successful, uh, Liberty will have great field position. Trying to sneak it. Looked like it hit the ground. Liberty says they have it, but I don't think he got the first down regardless. I don't think Page got that snap cleanly. Mm -mm. It looked like he kind of fumbled the snap and then tried to just pick it up while falling forward. And Yeah, they backed up. The officials getting the players separated a little bit. They're about a full oh, yard shot. Time out for a measurement. Really? Wow. I don't think you need to take a measurement, do you? They backed up about two <laughs> feet. Just to pass I'll, say, on where I'll they save you the time. Yeah, where they where they spotted the ball. So. I, okay. Chain crew getting the work out here. Yeah, come on now. So uh, this is what each team has done in the first six drives of the game. Looks a little lopsided. Head, State, head coach has called timeout to challenge the spot of the ball in relation to the line to game. Wow. Did he just chuckle? I thought, did Stuart Mullins just chuckle when he said that? I don't know. I think he did. I mean, we'll t I'm sure we have another look at it, but oh, challenging goodness. the spot is always so difficult, especially in a big pile up like we had there on a short yardage situation. It's tough anyway, but especially in a play like that where it looked like the snap may have been a little bit mishandled. That's going to be tough to overturn. There you go. You see the ball on the ground, and his knee, I think, was on the ground at that point, too. So. I don't think that's going anywhere. The massive humanity you're trying to see through as well makes it difficult. We'll see what our guy down the hall, Rusty Aker, has to say about it. But the ball is down. His knee is down. It looked like right there, and you saw him try to jump up. After review, the really on the field stands. Moorhead State is charged with their third and final 
time out of the half and have, has lost their right to challenge for the remainder of the game. Well, you look like a genius when those work, when you get it and convert on fourth down. You look like less than that when they don't. And then it kind of went from bad to worse because you lost your last time out of the half as well. And uh, they're in a tough spot now against this Liberty offense that has been scoring from any spot on the field here so far tonight. Flames start at the 28 yard line. Buckshot with a couple of running backs behind him. He's going to throw, dumps it out to Matthews. 20, 15, pushed out of bounds. The penalty marker is thrown behind the ball about 10 yards. But nice run by Matthews. Yeah, we might get a hold out there on the edge. Holding, Holding. number seven, number seven. Offense. offense, 10 yard Ten penalty. penalty. First down. first down. That's the fifth penalty against Liberty in the first half. Five called against Moorhead State. There you go, Damian King just hanging on. Had the arm kind of wrapped up. It's that fine line between being aggressive, really blocking on the edge, and then you may be a little too aggressive. You hang on for a split second, and you can kill a big play. Buckshot Calvert, 7 of 15, 195 yards in this game. That's knocked away, gets it back right into his hands. And as a result, Liberty's going to lose about 13 yards. He's shaking his head. He knows he should have just batted that ball to the ground. Once you catch it, you can't throw it again. So you're in all kinds of trouble. Just knock that ball to the turf. It's an incomplete pass. Then go back to work. But a lot of times just... Your natural instinct is to snag it out of the air. He did, and then he found himself in a world of hurt. Flores knocking that one down into uh, Buckshot's hands. Second down, 26. Mosley. Oh, no. Buckshot, excuse me, faked me out. Buckshot to the 39-yard line before he was tripped up by number 21, Chauncey Johns. Well, he was looking downfield. He wanted a receiver to get downfield. Nobody did. They were all kind of just a few yards down the field, blocking it looked like, as if they thought Buckshot was going to take off, so he really didn't have any options. I like that he was keeping his, his eyes upfield, trying to make a play with his arm, but he just didn't have anybody sprinting towards the end zone. Third down now, 21. Buckshot back. That's the scramble again. Just going to go down the sideline. Tackled out of bounds. Yeah, now a late penalty marker. Boy, so costly. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 94, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. You do such a great job defensively, backing them up, and then Mukulu, with just an ill-advised play, tackling Buckshot out of bounds, and, and you basically erase all the good things that you have done to that point in this possession. He's trying to get off the field now. First and 10 from the 23. Buckshot keeps it. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Can go nowhere. Tackled by uh, Jerome Brooks. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was the way that play was designed. Coming back there, you saw Kentori Matthews kind of pat his chest like he was saying, my fault. Got to imagine that, that wasn't the way Joe Daly drew that one up. And certainly, Especially with the score the way it is, you don't want Buckshot Calvert taking any unnecessary hits. Second down, 12. The pitch to Matthews, 10. To the six yard line. That's a first down and goal for the Flames. Boy, he's got a little giddy up to him, doesn't he? He gets the ball in his hands and he's got a burst. Flames going quickly here. First and goal. The pitch again. Matthews. Out of bounds. You're seeing the tempo that we heard about a season ago, but we're actually seeing now this year. 
Guys know their responsibilities. They know the playbook. They're familiar with what they're supposed to be doing now in the second year under Joe Daly. And the tempo is so much faster than it was last season. In Buckshot's first as a freshman, and in Joe Daly's first as the old coordinator. Matthews in for the touchdown. That's his first. Now, welcome to Liberty, Kentori Matthews having himself a ball game. They basically just gave this drive to him. Let him handle all the running back responsibilities on this possession, and he came through. Now, 62 yards on nine carries in that score. Perhaps we have a three-headed monster back at the running back position again this season. Alex Probert. Liberty just dominating this game from the start. Kentori Matthews from Virginia Beach, Virginia. He was the first commit after the FBS announcement. Liberty with really some talented athletes coming into the program. You know, it's been really interesting to watch the recruiting process and that win uh, over Baylor, no doubt helped out a, a good bit as well, Matt. Well, yeah, you heard the guys talking about it in the pregame show. You're not going to have any problem getting into folks' living rooms now after winning over Baylor. Everybody knows the name Liberty. Nationally, that got enough attention that people know now. They know about your school, they know about your program, they know about the fact that you're going FBS. And so now that you've kind of made yourself known like that to people all around the nation, that opens up just another level of recruit that you'll be able to talk to. And the facilities, which we've talked about for years, being top notch, continue to get better. And there's no excuse that they can't just blow things up on the recruiting trail here the next few years. All the national attention certainly helping the program. Probert kicking off again into the end zone will not be returned. Moorhead State had been dominating in the time of possession until that last uh, series for the Flames. They weren't struggling losing the yardage and penalties and everything else before they got some momentum going into the end zone and caught up in time of possession as well. But Moorhead State with only 27 yards passing. Yeah. A total of 30 only six yards rushing for a total of 33 yards in this game. Liberty's at 273 yards of offense. Yeah and again the only points that Moorhead State got were basically because of two personal fouls going against Liberty that allowed them to move down the field. And, and it was a 53 start, yard field. Number yeah. 60. Offense. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. First down. Seven penalties now on Moorhead State. Again that was an issue a week ago. down 15 pass caught 30 35 40 45 midfield liberty chasing out of bounds at the 35 yard line that was the biggest play of the game higginbotham making that catch that the eagles have had in the first half yeah chris turner gambled and it did not pay off he guessed wrong here trying to jump this route was just a step too slow higginbotham got it and Turn it into a big play. He had a big game last week as well, over 100 yards receiving in that contest. Holbrook carrying across the 30 down to the 29 yard line. There's Holbrook. Page over the middle, caught 25 20. Sutherland. Hit hard at the 15 yard line. So just like that, we're seeing the Eagles yeah. start to get some offense going. Yeah, Jake Sutherland, a big target, 6'5", tight end. Got some couple of big tight ends. See if they're able to find some room for those guys. He came all the way across the field on that play. Holbrook. Holbrook, again the ball carrier. 16 yard line, it'll be second down. 
Well, listen, it's 38-3. Your expectations kind of change if you're Moorhead State at this point. You're just looking to get better, make some positive plays, take some things out of this game that you can feel good about going forward. And obviously staying healthy is, is a big thing as well. But if they're able to drive down here and get a touchdown going into the half, you go into the break, you say clean slate, forget about what happened in the first half. Let's go out and just keep trying to build on that in the second. And, you know, forget this one. You start looking ahead and saying, what can we do here tonight that makes us better in the future? Second down seven. Page to the end zone. Touchdown, Moorhead State. Sutherland makes that catch in the end zone. First touchdown of the game for the Eagles. Sutherland being matched up with the smaller Brandon Tillman. The offensive line did a great job holding up as well, giving Page time to set his feet and fire. And the big six foot five tight end using that body to shield off the defender and make the touchdown snag. Sam McDonough comes in to attempt the extra point. He's a freshman. He was eight of eight last week in the dominating win over the NAIA school, and he's successful there. Moorhead State with a couple of really good passing plays to score their first touchdown of the game here late in the second quarter. Tickets for upcoming Flames football games can be purchased online at libertyflames.com slash tickets, or you can call the Flames ticket office at 434-582-SEAT. We look forward to seeing you at Williams Stadium this fall. And speaking of that, the Flames will be here next Saturday. They'll be hosting Indiana State. That's a 6 p.m. Eastern time game here at Williams Stadium. It'll be on LFSN television as well. But if you're anywhere in Central Virginia, you'll want to come and experience Williams Stadium and Flames football in person. Yeah, we remember doing that game in Terre Haute a few years back. Yep. And uh, they kind of took it to Liberty in that one. See if the Flames can give them a little taste of their own medicine back here in Virginia. Stubbs and Hickson waiting for this kickoff with 1.43 to go in the half. Don't forget to stay with us at halftime. We'll even hear from Paul Rattigliano. How about that? He's always got something special to say. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> Liberty on the return. And to the 25-yard lines is DJ Stubbs. Or was that Hickson? It was Hickson with that uh, kickoff return. Hickson is 5'8", and Stubbs is 5'9". I just love how their jerseys wrinkle right at the numbers sometimes. That's why you got to have the name on the back, you know, because or at least see their backs. And uh, in this game, it's uh, the Eagles have seen a lot of Liberty's that's, backs. That's true. That's true. The, the way the Flames have been able to stretch the field. Talking about touchdown plays of 25, 42, and 76 yards. It's that quick strike offense, and we're going to kick it all over again, Mike. Yeah. Oh, how fun. That scoring drive for Moorhead State, five plays, 75 yards. Now they're trying to kick it off. And so Stubbs and Hickson are back there once again. Fifteen yard line is Hickson. Twenty to the twenty two. Hickson on the return. Tackle made uh, by number twenty one for Moorhead State. I think that was um, Chauncey Johns. It is Johns, the uh, red shirt junior. So a minute and a half to go here before the break. Your Liberty, let's kind of see what their mentality is. You, you can either use this situation essentially to, to try, you know, get down field goal range, get a quick score. Essentially use the situation for when you run into it the next time in a close ball game, or you just run out the clock, get to the half, and you keep on cruising. Looks like with an empty backfield here, they're thinking the former, as now uh, Hickson does come in and stand alongside Buckshot. 
Buckshot Calvert, four touchdown passes in the game to King at midfield. King still on his feet will be tackled at midfield. Nice job by Damian King to keep churning those legs, and the Flames are hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and a great catch away from his body. Good hands catch. Remember, we saw him drop one earlier in the game. That time, able to flag it down, and I think we quickly get an idea of what Liberty is thinking here over this last minute and 10 or so. Buckshot completes it at the 44-yard line to B.J. Farrow, steps out of bounds, stops the clock, 105 to go in the half. A great opportunity to put the Flames in a, a late half situation, not a lot of time to work with, see how they can run their offense under a little bit of stress here, having to hurry it up. B.J. Farrow, the leading receiver in the first half for the Flames, five catches, 132 yards. Buckshot dumps it off. Pitson, 40, 35, 30. That's the first down. What good play call, the screen. Great kick out block from Dante Duff. You're going to see it right here. Just pushing the defender out of the way. That allowed Hickson to get loose. Forty-five seconds to go in the half. Buckshot, good protection. Helmet goes off. Penalty markers thrown, and Buckshot throws it out of bounds. Yeah, I might get hands to the face. Yeah. Number seventy-four, offense, 15-yard penalty, first down. The Moorhead State player whose helmet came off does not have to leave the game for one play. Julio Lozano, the left tackle. Number 74 there. Yeah, he saw it not <laughs> once, but twice. Got a couple of shots in there. We laugh about it now, but backs the flames up. And, you know, this is one of those things you say, you, may, you do that now, but what if this were a three-point ball game? And these points are so critical at the end of the half. I think Lozano will hear about it in practice. I think you're right. <laughs> Maybe a few extra spins. Buck shot being chased. Downfield. Farrow, touchdown. What can't this kid do? You're not going to see it in the box score, Mike, but the kid that made this play possible was Frankie Hickson. He delivered a block that essentially allowed Buckshot time to continue to roll out. And then the rest was pure arm talent. Liberty 45 to 10. Watch this block right here. Frank Hickson blocked one guy, blocked him into the other. So essentially he took out two defensive players on his own. Allowing Buckshot the time to get squared, let it fly, and B.J. Farrow twisting his body, hauling it in at the other end. Wow. 45-yard touchdown reception by B.J. Farrow. And Liberty has 45 points on the scoreboard with 24 seconds to go in the half. Five touchdown passes for Buckshot in the first half. Oh, by the way, the Liberty record in the game is six. <laughs> so we'll see how much playing time he gets in the second half, but he's going to have a shot to set that record. And B.J. Farrow had already set a personal record for yards in the game. He's now up to 177 yards receiving three touchdowns. He said, I saw what you did last week, Antonio. Well, guess what? The old vet is back in town. Let me show you what I can do. <laughs> 24 seconds to go in the half. And the Liberty fans on the far side of the field have been on their feet the entire half. Take it at the eight yard line, Washington 20, 25 into the 29 yard line. There they are. Good crowd on hand side, student section. Again, essentially, because the band moved, they have an entire another section to fill, and it's almost completely full here as well. So great job by them to come out, and have they ever seen an offensive clinic? Make sure you stay with us at halftime on most of the same LFSN television stations. Our halftime crew is getting ready. Rhett 
DJ and Miles will break down the first half and good luck breaking down all that we've seen in the first half. Oh huh? my, there's a lot to talk about, including targeting. It's always a subject uh, these days. And that's the last play of the half. Liberty just uh, unbelievable start, came out strong, could do no wrong. Got a little bit messy in the middle of the way of the first half, but uh, the Flames have just dominated. You'll want to stay with us. We're going to be hearing from Coach Gill here in just a moment. Bobby will grab him as he heads to the locker room, if at all possible, and get his thoughts on the first half. But we've got a full uh, halftime show coming up for you. Is also the spirit of the Mountain Marching Band will be performing. You'll see them in the background. They always provide a great entertainment for the crowd that's here. And let's head down to Bobby. All right, Coach, you're up 45 to 10 at the half. I don't think we've seen this offense slow down yet. But for you personally, Coach, what were you most impressed with? Well, I'm pleased the way we're playing. Our guys are doing a great job there. I don't like my defense as far as a lot of penalties has happened. So we're going to go in here and talk about that and get that straight now. Coach, you made it pretty clear last weekend of not letting to get too big, to get too low. You stay in the moment. What is your message to your guys at the halftime? Play each play like it's your last play you're going to play in. Execute like you know how to execute, and we'll play well. All right, Coach. Good luck second half. Thank you. Thanks. Guys. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. So uh, Liberty enjoying a 35-point lead in the home opener at Williams Stadium. Liberty's last year at the FCS level, and they're looking to go 2-0 for the first time since 2010. Half time in a minute. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. The running of the Bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. Freedom to drive what you want to drive, wear what you want to wear, and bank where you want to bank. At Carter Bank & Trust, you'll find the freedom to bank the way you like. Personal service with a smile, face-to-face -face from people that know you. And with services like our no-fee debit card, lifetime free checking, and over 100 convenient locations, you're free to bank your way. Carter Bank & Trust, the freedom to be you. things become traditions. Thank you for making yours Foster Fuels. It's time now for the Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities Halftime Report. Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities. We want to do life with you. Hey there, friends. Welcome back to Liberty Mountain. The Flames currently leading 45 to 10. That's quite the mark. Now, I'm looking online this week. I got pretty frustrated and pretty stoked up. <laughs> FCS rankings, the Flames at 20th. Yeah. Well, that's a joke, right? It has to be. Yeah, I mean, Mike Tilly uh, tweeted about it this week and said it was a disrespect, and I, and I agree with him. Uh, they should be in the top 10 after beating Baylor. For real. That's a big win. So I don't know if uh, maybe they did that as a disrespect to the Big South or are, what. Are I don't know. Are people grumpy out there? They're like, hey, they're leaving. They're going FBS. Like, right. this is yeah. their last yeah. year technically at FCS. I agree with you guys 110%. I think they should definitely be in the top 10. Uh, and I think they're coming out here and showing that. They're playing with a little right. bit of an edge today. One right. guy showing it right now, B.J. Farrell. Oh, Welcome back. Welcome oh, my back. goodness. What a performance. Oh, my gosh. He is balling. Six receptions, 100. 
177 yards and three touchdowns. And I just want to give a moment of silence for the defensive back <laughs> right now for Moorhead State because they're they're hurting really bad. And the defense there, you see them going after Lawson Page all day. He's been running. Uh, he he's only has 99 yards through the year of passing, and 46 of the yards was one reception. But um, right. the defense is playing really strong. You gotta gotta be very happy with it. I think the defense is playing really really well. But now when you take a look at Damian King, he's been playing lights out today, uh, running all over the field, uh, as well as BJ, like you attested to a little earlier. Um, BJ is catching everything that comes his way. Uh, definitely welcome back to him, and you can tell that he has a little chip on his shoulder from not playing last. Oh my God! I think yeah. from last week, but also from last season a little bit. He yeah. he didn't have the year I think most expected, but he's off to a great start here tonight. Exactly. You know we're gonna talk about Damian King Jr. This guy injured last season yeah. coming in and he's strutting his stuff a little bit as well. Damian King is probably one of the most explosive receivers we have here at Liberty University. Uh, the kid can run around you, through you and obviously by you as we've seen today. Uh, but the biggest thing is that the man can create something out of nothing as we've seen right there. Uh, the kid can move and, and get out of your way really really quickly. If you look at the receivers here for Liberty, they are so diverse. We'll talk a little bit about that in a few moments. Stay with us. We'll return in just a sec. And it's game on. Fourth and 18. Friends rushing the party in under an hour. Super Mom's headed for the snack aisle. Ooh, this one's a scramble. It's all come down to this. Look at that air. She's got it. And there's that signature double pour. Crisp chips, crunchy pretzels. This crowd's gone crazy. We did it, honey. Best party ever. Yeah, we did it. Bucks, go for the glory. Musco Lighting, we make it happen. What's the Big South? What's the Big South? It's our home. It's our home. Rooted in excellence. Built from hard work. It's our backbone. London I will. Driven to surpass our potential. It's our heart. Unbreakable bonds. And our journey. Striving for more. Determined to lead. Day in and day out. This is the Big South. Where winners are made. It's time now for the Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities Halftime Report. Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities. We want to do life with you. Hey there, we're glad you're still with us. And joining us now is going to be a main man on the field ops team for Liberty Football. And, you know, I was checking the obituaries all summer long just oh to make gosh. sure that Paul Rattigliano <laughs> was okay. And he is. He's going to be joining us now. And, uh, Paul, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> I know it took you 364 days to think about that. I just so. came up with a couple minutes ago. Come on. Oh, <laughs> stop it. You're not that quick-witted. Hey, Paul, you, you look great, man. Yeah, you do look pretty solid there. You look good. Not oh. a day over 80. You look good. Well, you know, I feel bad for Miles. You know, I appreciate that. Uh, you know, Miles, hang in there. That. Things will get better. Yes, Don't sir. worry. Yes, sir. Paul, you've
Liberty football for quite some time. How have you seen the perception of Liberty football change in just this last week with a big win? Well, obviously, you guys can see the headlines, and it's been an unbelievable week. And I think Turner Gill and his staff did a tremendous job this week of bringing the guys back down to earth and getting them ready to play against Moorhead State. But again, a, what a wonderful win for, uni for the university, Dr. Falwell's vision of being an FBS program. And the first time since 2012 where Turner Gill has started off 1-0 in his career here at Liberty. Yeah, and Paul, you know, after the first game, uh, the big win over Baylor, it's kind of like a, a first date. And then you go on the second date and you're like, there's no way that it could be a as good as this. But Liberty came out here ready to play. They put up 45 points um, on this quad, and they're executing very well. Uh, were you concerned about that at all? You know, not really. Uh, I really thought, DJ, that they were going to continue to play well offensively in all facets of the game, and especially tonight. You can really see in the beginning of the game, special teams really set the tempo early with field position. I thought that was going to be a huge plus. Obviously, you can see the depth in the receiving core. You know, Anten Antonio Gandy-Golden, one catch tonight, but B.J. Farrell having a spectacular first half. But more importantly with those guys, a lot of those guys are interchangeable because they can play all three positions. So that's the thing that really intrigues me the most. But last week, with B.J. Farrell not playing, you saw Marquise Fitzgerald step up and play. So now you've got depth across the board with about six guys deep that you know can play 60 to 70 plays. Hey, Paul, what's the one difference in the offensive line from last week to this week? They played really, really well last week against a big Baylor defense and defensive line. Uh, what's the difference as far as leakage today? Well, you know what? The one thing tonight I've noticed on the deep, on the op offensive line is Buckshot has, for the most part, last week he got sacked one time, but he wasn't on his back at all. This week, a little bit of being on his back, a little bit of being hit after the throw, and that's the thing that I think they're going to have to work with. Again, the last eight minutes of the second quarter, if you look at it, both ways, play got a little sloppy with some penalties like on Jalen McKinney, then obviously Jawan Wells gets thrown out of the football game. So I'm sure they're going to really look at that part, that eight minutes, and really look at that tomorrow and dissect that and say, hey, what did we do? How did we take ourselves out of this? You know, what can we do to improve? So they're really going to have to look at that, I think, tomorrow. Paul, thanks for the time. I wish there was more of it. Oh, I'm sure you do. Thanks. I really Red. do. I really do. DJ Farrow, three touchdowns on the day. Stay with us. Second half coming up in just a moment. Sodexo, global leader in quality of life services, is committed to creating exceptional experiences at Liberty University. Enjoy delicious concessions as we cheer on the flames. Visit us in our many dining locations for both campus and community. And join us in our efforts towards sustainability and fighting hunger in Central Virginia. Sodexo is changing the face of college dining. For more information, visit libertydining.com. University athletics continue to climb to new heights. Game On is your weekly source for all things Flames. We bring you inspirational stories of faith from this Division I program, as well as all the news and highlights that you crave. Game On is covering the world's largest evangelical university like no one else. So join us each week to see what's happening around Flames Nation. Get in the game and watch Game On. It's time now for the Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities Halftime Report. Runk and Pratt Senior Living Communities. We want to do life with you. The team will 
Thanks for staying with us through the half, 45-10. Still the score. Time to take a look now at our Geico game at a glance. And statistically, the Flames just dominating basically every area. Yeah, right now, what I believe uh, is happening with Damian King having three yards uh, and three catches for 86 yards apiece. Uh, right now, for us, we have a total of 365 total offensive yards. The offense is lighting it up right now, guys. Uh, I don't think much is going to stop them. They've had a little bumps in the road so far, uh, but as far as Buckshot throwing it down the field, there's not much that's getting him down tonight. Uh, also, and, and the offense has been getting a lot of praise, but you also got to look at what the defense did. Yeah. Um, uh, 111 yards there. You had the quarterback under pressure all day long. You had an interception, a turnover, um, only one third down conversion all right. day long. So you got to give some props to the defense. You know, and defensively, we were talking about Lucas Iron was supposed to play tonight. They were thinking, but McKinney came in. You're really impressed with him, yeah. Miles. McKinney has done a great job tonight. He came in, got a sack right away. He got an interception, obviously, as we saw. Uh, he had one slip-up penalty as he got in later in the game. Um, but I think if he continues to play, then he's going to do really well. Uh, I think he'll end the game with at least seven to eight tackles tonight, which how, is huge for him. How much have we seen the depth of Liberty football improve from last season just to this year? I think it's it's massive, obviously, you know, with the scholarships, us gaining a little bit of those this year. Um, but just with the talent that we have um, as far as defensively uh, and who they can put back there, it's, it's next guy up mentality the whole time with our offense and with our defense. Yeah, and I think you really see it at the skill positions, and that's one area where you really set yourself apart from the other FCS teams that will really lead into the transition to FBS. I mean, you have so many strong uh, talent at the cornerback position, safety position, uh, definitely the running back. We've been talking about four different running backs who could really be the key guy at any other program. And so uh, it's good to see there, and I know it's got to be comforting uh, for Turner Gill. Yeah, Matthews, you know, I guess he's pre technically third on the depth chart when it comes to your tailbacks and he's having a nice night they kind of have a nice spread there you've got Macon. a guy's more of a power guy you know yeah. Macon he may come back mm -hmm. you get a power guy Frankie Hickson's just yeah. quick as lightning and then Matthews he can kind of juke around on you yeah. it's a nice little spread even as you've seen today with Matthews he's able to get around people and he's able to go through as well on if a change of pace down here exactly he's a great change of pace um, from Carrington Mosley and even from Frankie uh, he's your smaller kind of back that's uh, we call him a scat back so you're probably I think you're going to get a lot of uh, rushing uh, in yeah. this second half. I think exactly. you're going to see the run game established a little bit more. You only had 80 yards this first uh, half, which is not that bad, but uh, I think if you're Turner Gill, you really want to get that running game going and get the linemen used to getting downfield and pushing the line of scrimmage, and we'll see how it happens. Well, Buckshot having himself quite a night. When we return, Mike Tilly with a call. This is where heart rules height teamwork triumphs and hard work reigns supreme. This is what happens when a hunger for success meets a religious drive to be great. This is where nothing is given and excellence is earned. This is the Big South where winners are made. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. The running of the Bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. What's the Big South? What's the Big South? What's the Big South? It's our home. It's our home. Rooted in excellence. Built from hard work. It's our backbone. An undeniable will. Driven to surpass our potential. It's our heart. Unbreakable bonds. And our journey. Striving for more. Determined to lead. Day in and day out. This is the Big South. Where winners are made. 
This Big South Network game is brought to you in part by Hardee's, eat like you mean it. Ut Snacks, get snacking. And Geico, Big South alumni could save even more with an alumni discount from Geico. Visit geico.com slash Big South today. Mike Tilly and Matt Warner back with you. Halftime here at Williams Stadium. Liberty leads Moorhead State 45 to 10. Liberty just dominating this uh, game every quarter uh, in the first half, both of them. Hey, let's look at the keys to the game, Matt. You were right on uh, point. Well, not too bad. You know, you talked about Moorhead State. We said they need to pressure the quarterback. They have one sack of buckshot, but really, especially early in the ball game, he had lots of time to sit back there and has also been able to avoid the rush pretty well as we saw that end of the half touchdown so they haven't been able to pressure him as well as they like and the big thing for their offense was to establish the run they have just 12 rush yards in the first half so they haven't been able to do that for the flames no let down and right out of the gate they came out firing offensively there was never really much of a concern after that and then take away the big play Outside of the one catch from Higginbotham that went for 46 yards, this Flames defense has done a good job of limiting the big play. The only downside, and Turner Gill talked about it going into the half, the penalties on the defense. They need to clean that up because too many just dumb personal fouls on this Liberty D that have allowed Moorhead State, I mean, not a lot. They only have the 10 points, but allow them to get in position to put some points on the board. Let's look at the uh, first half drive results. You'll see that. That's impressive. Uh, yes, uh, Moorhead State, uh, they did get a touchdown late in the second quarter, and they had that 53-yard field goal. But uh, Liberty scoring all but one possession. Yeah, that is really impressive, the way this offense has moved the football. Williams Stadium fans having to put on a jacket here tonight as temperatures have dropped a little bit. This is perfect weather. This is football weather. We remember last year their opener, it was like 90 degrees. We were yeah. all dying. This is perfect weather for a home opener. Liberty kicking off, and uh, we'll see if Moorhead State can come fired up to start the second half. That's Tarver. 20-yard line, 25-30, and Tarver is uh, knocked out of bounds by, uh, it looks like uh, DJ Stubbs got in there, and there is a penalty marker on the field. The officials will sort it out on the far side line. You're watching the Big South Network, which is brought to you in part by Geico. Number 21, receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And that is the ninth penalty yeah. against the Eagles. And that's something that they have got to find a way to clean up as they move forward. 14 penalties a week ago. There you saw just a little bit of a hold there. Now the nine already here just opening the second half. Just have to play discipline. You, I, penalties like that, it's hard enough to win a game, you know, against a good opponent move the football, do everything you're supposed to do, but then when you're hurting yourself with penalties, you just dig yourself a hole. Inside the 10-yard line, they'll mark it at the 8. Holbrook is in the backfield along with the quarterback, Lawson Page. Page was actually the leading rusher for the Eagles in the first half. That's a two-yard gain. Yeah, and he's a good runner. Remember, he was their Wildcat quarterback last year. A little bit surprised we haven't seen more designed runs drawn up for him simply because he's had a little success moving around. 9 of 17 passing, 99 yards. Second down, 7. Spread out. This happens a lot for Moorhead State, looking over to the sideline after they've gotten set. Holbrook. Holbrook picks up two. It'll be third down, about five. Well, his third and manageable is an improvement for Moorhead State compared to what we've seen for most of the night. They're just one of seven on third down attempts to a large part to the fact that usually it's third and long. Third down four for Page. This is one of the good things though about 
the hurry up offense is fast tempo you get up to the line quick but then there's still plenty of time on the play clock clock to look to the sideline and adjust based off what the defense shows you page looking downfield going long and it's caught at the 41 yard line what a catch by sutherland the big fella showing the soft hands how about this snag <laughs> The one hand reaching out there. He had the touchdown grab earlier in the ball game. He's been easily their most effective pass catcher. 28 yards on that catch. Holbrook with the carry for four. 6-5 tight end showing some athleticism. Sticking that big paw out there. Second down, Holbrook. Has the first down in the Flames territory at the 44-yard line. Davis making the tackle. There's Ryan Davis from Hopkins, South Carolina. Won the Sam Gatto Award in the spring. Most improved defensive player. Holbrook picks up a yard on first down. Holbrook starting his first career game against Kentucky Christian last Saturday. Over 100 yards rushing in that game. 17 carries. Averaged about six yards a carry. Second down, nine. Page throwing downfield. Caught 25-yard line. Good catch by Higginbotham. And it's another first down for the Eagles. Yeah, Higginbotham with another nice snag. He had the big play in the first half of 46 yards. Chris Turner was over there, wasn't able to slam on the brakes and adjust to that route. Good throw and catch, good timing between the quarterback and receiver on that route. Moorhead State at the 25-yard line. First down, 10. Page going long overthrows the receiver that was Higginbotham again yeah trying to work that connection one more time and well, I gotta tell you the way that Moorhead State has come out here in the second half Rob Tenure must be thrilled you gotta think his conversation with this team at half was all about what happened in the first two quarters doesn't matter let's play and try to win the third quarter play and try to win the fourth quarter and just get better the rest of the way and this offense has come out looking as sharp as we've seen it in this ball game currently on an eight play 67 yard drive facing a second down and 10. Page dumps it out on the screen complete to Holbrook. Holbrook is hit hard and out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Good job by Chris Turner that time able to shed the block get his nose in there and just slow down the ball carrier just a bit brings up third and long now. Two receivers to the near side of the field, two to the far side. Page has running back Holbrook with him in the backfield. Page pass is caught, 25, 20. Tackle at the 15-yard line. That's uh, Hurst, Landon Hurst, on the reception. Close to a first down. Yeah, and what two guys whiffed here. You see McKinney coming in. It's like Ryan Davis missed as well. They're going to be just short of that first down, but the missed tackle is allowing them a chance now to go for it on fourth and about a yard. Yeah, fourth down one at the 16-yard line. They went for a fourth down and a one in the first half. Wasn't successful. We'll see much better field position this time to go for it. Page has the first down inside the 15. So the Eagles continuing their drive, 11 plays. Yeah, Page is fired up. You remember the last time they went for it on fourth? He got under center, mishandled the snap. That time, they keep him where he's comfortable in the shotgun, allow him to handle that snap easily. And as we mentioned, a good runner, athletic. He's able to pick up that first down. Page 
Page. Sliding and making the catch. Bobby. Hey, I guys spoke with head coach Moritz, head coach Rob Tenner, and asked him, what adjustments do you need to make to slow down this high-powered offense? Liberty's showing us in the first half. He says, Bobby, we got to get to him. We're giving Buckshot way too much time in the pocket. We got to make something happen. Make him throw something. We're giving him way too much time. He did say, however, that towards the second towards the second quarter that they had better pressure and that they were liking what they were seeing. So, so guys, he said that hopefully they can make something happen, get Buckshot out of his game a little bit quicker. Well, the offense did it right there. Holbrook going in to score the touchdown that's the second touchdown of the game for the Eagles so coach tenure really put together a great series offensively 13 plays 92 yards driving to the end zone McDonough's extra point is good well, good job by Moorhead State. I bet uh, Coach Gill wasn't very pleased with that. No, and I would imagine that defense is hearing about it. You know, you get a big lead. Sometimes guys start to kind of let up a bit. And no matter the score, that's not what the coaching staff wants to see. They want to see if you're out there, you better be ready to go. And I imagine they'll find somebody who is if, if they feel like some guys aren't on the top of their game at this point. Keep wondering how long we'll see Buckshot Calvert uh, out there for the Flames. He has five touchdown passes, 281 yards, 13 of 21. You know, the Flames, after winning at Baylor in Waco, Texas, tried to fly back in that uh, that evening, uh, well, that night. It was early morning hours. A lot of fans gathered on Liberty Mountain to uh, welcome them home, but there was fog. They couldn't land the plane. And so they had to go to Charlotte. They landed in Charlotte, then had to bus uh, back to Lynchburg, and they didn't get in until midday. So they were exhausted and worn out after that game. And the coach was concerned about them uh, recovering from that and uh, the physical exhaustion, stress from some other things. But the Flames have just played really good football here in the home opener. And we'll see what Stubbs can do on the return. 30, 35, 40 down the sideline, turns it back, 30. Finally tackled inside the 20-yard line. D.J. Stubbs, the freshman from Jacksonville, Florida. A true freshman igniting this crowd once again. The staff loves this kid. Freak athlete, you see the speed, tightrope walking down the sideline, managed to stay in bounds before weaving through some traffic. What a return to just when you feel like we're at stake, it's a little something going, you let them know, nah, we, we got this. <laughs> 71 yards, 71 yards on that return. Let's go, Tristan! Liberty has it, 19 yard line, first down 10. New quarterback, Cunningham. And uh, Hickson maybe three yards on first down. Well, so Mason answer, Cunningham, yeah. yeah, Mason Cunningham, the uh, sophomore second string quarterback who transferred in January. He's from Shelbysville, Tennessee. And so we're going to see what, uh, what he can do. Yeah, Juco kid. Throwing overthrows the intended receiver. That was Spencer Jones who was trying to run under it. Yeah, they didn't seem like they were quite on the same page there, but they like they like this kid, a quarterback. They think he can really help kind of solidify things at the backup spot. Cunningham, a guy that can run it a little bit as well as throw it. Has some experience, not at the Division I level, but at the JUCO ranks. And there wasn't a lot of depth behind Buckshot, so they were happy to get him in there. Cunningham tries it again, and it's intercepted. Was he inbounds? And I think they say he was. So it's an interception. Mason Cunningham throws the interception right into the hands of Johns. And I didn't know if they were going to look at it again upstairs, but uh, I don't think they will. Uh, Johns bit of redemption as he was remember he was the guy abused in that corner by Antonio Gandy Golden earlier in the ball game that time making up for it a bit with the interception 
timeout on the field at Williams Stadium on the campus of Liberty University, Lynchburg, Virginia. You might have heard some things about Liberty University, like how we're just a little Christian school in the middle of nowhere, and there's nothing to do here. I mean, come on, you know us. Boring. Boring? Yeah. They say we don't work as hard, think as hard, try as hard. I object. The truth is, well, we might surprise you. We the people. We are innovators, dreamers, leaders. Yeah, we feel pain. We get tired, but it won't stop us. God's call is our pursuit, and we will champion his name. Some great moments, some great memories in Waco, Texas, captured through the lens of Joel Coleman as Liberty University went down to Texas. Last play of the game, Liberty intercepts, and the Flames knock off Baylor 48-45. Huge win, first win ever for the Flames over a Power 5 opponent. And a great way to start the last season at the Division I FCS level. The Flames are bound for the FBS. Next year, a transition year. And in 2019, a full-fledged Division I FBS team. That pass caught Robinson. And Robinson picks up 16 yards on first down. Well, you're starting to see Lawson Page get into a rhythm now. They're moving him out of the pocket a little bit. Again, using his athleticism. Delivered a couple of good strikes, and I wonder, I know Liberty went with the, the backups there on that offensive possession, pulling buckshot, but if Morehead State were to come down and score a touchdown here, make it 45-24, if we wouldn't see the starters come back in. I was a little surprised at how early Coach Gill pulled out buckshot and a lot of those offensive starters there, and I thought they might give him a few possessions to increase this lead a little bit more, but when Morehead gets a touchdown here, you could see Buckshot once again. Pass complete to Washington. Washington at the 41 yard line. That's a five yard gain. There's Buckshot Calvert on the sideline. 13 of 21, 281 yards and uh, five touchdown passes in this game. Third down five, seven minutes to go in the third quarter. Page now is uh, 16 of 25, 177 yards. Dumps it complete. Holbrook penalty marker and uh, excuse me, I thought I saw yeah, one. I think we might have a little pick play going on there. Is you had one more at state player basically run into the defender to free up Holbrook. Pass interference number six offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. Yeah, Jalen Washington doing that. Again, just basically knocking out, knocking the defender out of the way that was on Hallbrook, and that allowed him to spring free. So, looked like it was going to be a big play. Instead, they back up, and it's third and long. Here you go. Take a look at the right of your screen. You see him coming? Yep. Boom. Just that shot right there. I think that was on David King. Allowing the running back to sprint free. Rob Tenure in his fifth year. 19 wins, 28 losses. But boy, he knows this Moorhead State program. He was a longtime assistant there and the uniqueness of the program. And he's trying to get his team back in this game with 624 to go in the third quarter. We'll take a break and return in a moment. And it's game on, fourth and 18. Friends rushing the party in under an hour. Supermom's headed for the snack aisle. Ooh, this one's a scramble. It's all come down to this. Look at that air. She's got it. 
Bath is that signature double pour. Crisp chips, crunchy pretzels. This crowd's gone crazy. We did it, honey. Best party ever. Yeah, we did it. Bucks go for the glory. NCAA Division I FCS football is a game of perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship. As he works to honor the game, every FCS student athlete grows in his responsibilities as a student and as a member of his campus and community. Dedicated to personal growth and success in the classroom, the NCAA Division I FCS, every down, every day. Big South events can be yours wherever you go, live and free on the Big South Network, available through the Watch tab at BigSouthSports.com. You can access BSN on your phone, tablet, or computer. You can also get the free Big South Network channel for your Roku device or Roku TV to watch games on the big screen. With hundreds of games every year, watch your team in action anytime, anywhere on the Big South Network. Glad to have you on LFSN television tonight from Lynchburg, Virginia. Third down and 20 for the Eagles with 624 to go in the third quarter. That's Weish. And uh, not enough for the first down. It's going to be fourth down and long. Mike Tilly and Matt Warner with you here. We're up top of the uh, press box and uh, enjoying a very, very nice view of uh, Williams Stadium. It uh, seats about 20,000. They're going to expand it to about 25,000 this time next year. And they've already started some construction. It's great to have Bobby along with us, too. Yeah. Her debut on the LFSN football broadcast. Well, Funny situation. Yeah. Boone is going to punt, standing inside the 20. And it's going to bounce short. Well, that hit it somebody. hit a Flames player. It's recovered by number 85. We'll see if uh, that's Sames, Nathan Sames. But uh, they're going to say it uh, did not hit a Liberty player. It's always a dangerous situation. Take a look. Nope. Pretty clearly hit off the Moorhead player there off his shoulder. You know. We saw Liberty get so much better in the kick return game last year when Scott Downing came over and took over special teams. Still waiting for the punt return game to kind of catch up. That has been a weakness over the years for the Flames. Liberty Flames football fans are the best. And that group can have a time taking the paint off. We're here in Lynchburg, Virginia, checking out a possible alien landing site. But before we look at this evidence, I want to thank our sponsors, Billy Craft, Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, for once again loaning us a beautiful Dodge Ram pickup. Oh, the truck. The truck. Hey, now be careful, that's a loner. Does our insurance cover UFO abduction? Some things become traditions. Thank you for making yours Foster Fuels. With innovative dining locations, full service catering, and crowd pleasing concessions, Sedexo is here to create exceptional experiences. Stay hungry, go Flames! You can support Liberty Athletics as a member of the Flames Club. Members enjoy preferred parking, seating, game day hospitality. Membership starts at just $60. For more information, visit libertyflames.com slash Flames Club. And boy, I tell you, the preferred parking and seating and game day hospitality is something else. Liberty's starting to draw larger crowds and it's moved to FBS, a new traffic pattern uh, and uh, parking situation for this particular season so uh, it really makes a big deal a difference when you are part of the flames club so make make an opportunity go to libertyflames.com and learn more about that liberty second string quarterback mason cunningham 
40-yard line and out of bounds at the 45. Matthews. Matthews scored a touchdown in the first half. Well, Matthews, when he's on the field, he looks like the fastest guy on the field. He was able to get the edge with ease, and he's been easily the most effective runner tonight for the Flames as he's up around 70 yards now for the ball game. 47-yard line. Handoff again, 50 to the 47. So fast he ran out of his shoe, Mike. <laughs> You'll have to check out to get that baby relaced. You like those red shoes? They look good. Might need to get a, get a pair to wear up here in the booth. Second down four. Hickson. And Frankie Hickson picks up the first down at the 40-yard line. Yeah, Frankie just his fourth carry on the night. You know, Carrington Mosley, a guy we thought would have a monster night this evening. Just four carries for 12 yards. Frankie Hickson just four carries for about 18 yards. Haven't seen those guys nearly as much as we thought we might. But with the success in the past game, I guess you can understand why. Hickson picks up another six. Liberty just trying to run the clock here, but trying to move fast. Uh, they're no huddle offense. Cunningham, the backup quarterback, hands it off to Hickson again. And Hickson reaches to the 27-yard line. Hickson had uh, eight carries, 17 yards last week. He went to Heritage High School, one of the city high schools here. He's got the ball right now and is tackled at the 25-yard line. I know he was happy last night because his Heritage High School team went to Appomattox, which was, I don't know, 20 minutes or so down the road, and Appomattox had a 32-game winning streak, the longest in the state, and Heritage went down there and beat them last night, so I'm, I'm sure he was quite pleased yeah, with that. And the Appomattox head coach, Doug Smith, Liberty alum, has had a lot of success there, former Liberty wide receiver. There's Matthews, five and down at the three-yard line. And Tory Matthews is a good runner. Yeah, you see that quickness again. It looks like the defender has the angle, and then he just has that quick step, creates some separation. Very, very nearly took this one to the house. Good blocking on the edge. Quick pitch, touchdown. That's the second touchdown of the game for Kentori Matthews. And he's up over 100 yards, rushing now a couple of TDs. A coming out party for Kentori Matthews in a Liberty Flames uniform. <laughs> Matthews comes to the sideline. Liberty scoring here in the second half for the first time. Herbert's extra point is good. Watch it again. Well, you feel like this offense is so deep, it may be a different guy every night out that can step up and be the hero, at least as far as the running back group goes. Tonight, that guy has been Kentori Matthews. Averaging just shy of eight yards a carry on 13 attempts tonight. Moorhead State still leads Liberty in time of possession now, about eight minutes more than the Flames, but uh, it doesn't really matter, does it? Liberty's just been uh, effective offensively, some big plays. And... Which that's an interesting thing, time of possession, and a lot of times it's kind of a, uh, I don't know, overrated stat a little bit. You looked back at last week, and you know Baylor had no time of possession, but they were scoring the football, you know? It's like, it doesn't matter. Sometimes you win it, sometimes you don't. If you're a high-powered offense, time of possession, you really throw it out the window because you'll take a three-play scoring drive over eating up five minutes and punting, you know? If you can score it from 75 yards out like the Flames have done here tonight, you'll take that and you don't really care how long you possess the football. Washington and Tarver wait for this uh, kick. Chance to return it this time. Tarver from the three-yard line. 
Gets a nice block. 20. Trips up at the 23-yard line, so a 20-yard return for Wanye Tarver from Kennesaw, Georgia. I wonder if he was recruited by Kennesaw State. Wouldn't surprise you. He's got some wheels, a good return man, although he comes up a bit gimpy, it looks like, after that play. Liberty will host Kennesaw State for homecoming this year. It's October 14th, and so if you're a Liberty grad somewhere around uh, the country watching, you can make it the homecoming. You should do that in mid-October. There was a special dinner for some Liberty alumni, Liberty football alumni last night. I think Morgan Hout was honored, and former Flames coach, and I think the 2007 team was honored as well. Page, a quarterback, throws it as he was going down, completed it. That pass complete to Jake Sutherland, and maybe a yard gain. Sutherland says, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Throw that to me for no gain, and I take a couple of shots on the end of it, but good job by Page avoiding the sack. Right up the middle. Four yards for the Eagles, approaching the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. London uh, carrying that time. Roberto London from Kentucky. He's a redshirt freshman. Third down six. Page going to lay it up. Nobody there. Yeah, he just had to get rid of it. Looked like Solomon McGinty right in his face. Liberty brought pressure up the middle. Page had no time to scan the field. And Rob Tenyer, who also serves as offensive coordinator, a little frustrated with his offensive line at this point. Moorhead State has 236 yards, total yards, 58 of them on the ground, 178 passing. They've got 10 penalties in this game, but... Uh, so far, better than they did a week ago. They had 14 penalties. There's still time. <laughs> yes. Fourth down. Boone to punt. Stubbs. Whoa! 40. Midfield. 40. Out of bounds. 33-yard line. Now you MJ see him. Stubbs. Now you don't. Goodness. It looked like there were two players right there ready to put a hit on him. In fact... Looked a little questionable him even fielding that punt in the first place. He just disappeared. Nice return. Well, listen, you talk about Moorhead State, and certainly they've had their struggles tonight. They were a 30-point underdog coming in, and but this is a young team. They only have nine seniors currently listed on their roster. They had 19 and 21 each of the past two years, so they're a young group. They have a first-year kid playing quarterback, a lot of young running backs that you've talked about. So it's a young group. They're only going to get better as the year goes along and probably even better a year from now when those guys have a year of experience under their belts. Pixon. Pixon picks up nine yards on first down. He took the handoff from Mason Cunningham, Liberty's number two quarterback. Buckshot has been out. He's not injured or anything. He just already had five touchdown passes. He did his work. He got it in early. <laughs> yeah. Liberty playing a lot of second and third team players. Pixon again. Has the first down. 23-yard line. Williams just trying to run the clock. Get this game over with. Get some rest because... Indiana State will be here next Saturday. That's a 6 p.m. game. We'll have it for you on LFSN television. Johnny oh. Dam is going to be tackled at the 26-yard line. They turned around, had not that money to hand it to, and uh, yeah, that's got to be a bad feeling. Yeah, it was when you turn bad. and there's nobody home. What? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. It happens. You'd rather make those kind of mistakes in a game like this. No kidding. 
getting some experience, learning. Liberty with 11 consecutive winning seasons, trying to make it 12 in a row as they wrap up Division I FCS play this year. Here, the home opener has been nothing but Liberty, and the Flames are playing great. Fourth quarter coming up. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for 250. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just 250. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for 250. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just 250. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. Lynchburg, Virginia, 52-17 the score, and you know, guys, I wanted to remind the fans out there, shortly after the game, we'll have our Facebook post-game show very shortly after the game. There you go. That's the beauty of television right there, but you know, another thing we could talk about football-related is okay. the fact that the kick return for Liberty has greatly improved over the last couple of years with yeah. Frankie yeah. Hickson and Stubbs. Yeah. yeah, it's the skill positions, man, and we have uh, a boatload of them, and you really see it on the kickoff and kickoff return, and uh, also on the punt and special teams, like Coach Sam Ritigliano used to be set. He used to say this all the time: special teams has to be special, or else it's not special. Yeah, and that's why you got a little great talent <laughs> on there. I think it's great. You just obviously you have the athletes like your Frankie Hicksons and your DJ Stubbs out there. Yeah. Um, but as well, you gotta you gotta cement the blocking, and that's what happens. Those guys are blocking really well up front. Uh, they take pride in special teams. They always tell you if you want to make an NFL team, you gotta show something on special teams first. And I think the guys are finally taking that to the heart. And maybe that's why I never made it. <laughs> I couldn't play special teams. All right, time to set up. Mike and Matt. Hey, I think DJ shaved his legs for this game. <laughs> you can tell that from all the way up there? Oh, oh yeah. Good. Good. It, was, it was a tight shot. <laughs> Mike has very good eyes. <laughs> Second down, 19. As Liberty starts the fourth quarter. And let's see what the Flames can do here. That's uh, Hickson. Breaks a couple of tackles, has the first down to the 20-yard line. You know, Frankie has those great feet. He showed that there. But also, I'm liking the vision that he's showing and the patience. Letting his block set up, not being in a hurry. And then when the hole opens up, boy, does he ever hit it. And a nice pickup there on second down. Little motion. Cunningham looking to the end zone, and it's incomplete. Broke it up, intended for Fitzgerald. But great defense by uh, Moorhead State. Looked like uh, Dance was back there, along with number 27, Carson. Kalen Carson, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, Cunningham trying to get in on the party here, throw a touchdown himself. Weren't quite able to complete the play. Instead, we'll get a uh, field goal opportunity for Probert, who's been perfect on the year. 37-yard attempt. He was 4 of 4 in Waco. And he's good. Special teams. Liberty really has great special teams this year. And, uh, you know, Scott Downing. We saw the improvement last year in his first season with the program. They continue to get better. That's a lot of that is Scott Downing and certainly on Probert as well. And his work ethic, as we talked about earlier, he's become a consistent field goal kicker already in his very young career. Liberty 55, Moorhead State 17. I used to watch the medical shows on TV when I was younger, and I wanted to be like the doctors and the nurses. But I think nursing was a really good fit for me because of the holistic approach that they take. There was a point in my nursing career that I was ready to go back. I actually remember two patients in particular telling me that they could see me doing more. 
The FNP DNP program is obtaining a family nurse practitioner degree. The DNP is a doctor of nursing practice. My husband and I love to go on mission trips, and we've been on a few medical mission trips. And I believe that the FNP DNP degree will really open up the door on the mission field a lot more. I think there was a few things that stood out on this campus. Number one, how kind people were to each other and how much the faculty truly cared for us as students, wanting us to succeed in pursuing higher education. Mike Philly and Matt Warner with you on LFSN. Liberty leads Moorhead State by 38 points. Hey, Bobby. Hey, guys. Yeah, all week, Coach Gill talked about how much respect he has for Moorhead State's head coach, Rob Tanner. Not only is he active in the football program, but he's also very active in the donating organ donations. His father's life was saved with a kidney transplant. So they always have a home game dedicated to organ donations. Their football program also is heavily supports lung cancer awareness and the push for a cure. Their former offensive coordinator, Craig Mullins, lost a five-month battle with lung cancer in May of 2015, and the program has since made heavy efforts to raise money ever since. So a lot of a lot of support from Coach Gill to Rob Tenner getting involved. Guys? Thanks, Bobby. Yep. Talked to him this week. Just uh, really enjoyed the conversation with him. Always enjoy talking to the coaches. They all have, you know, a little bit different personality, sure. but he's one to sort of hold things close to his vest you know he doesn't like to uh, unveil too much in terms of his strategy and things that he's uh, thinking in terms of the uh, the upcoming game but uh, really enjoyed talking with him and he said his philosophy and he told the team this uh, at the start of the season is uh, think half as much and uh, play uh, twice as hard run twice as fast so sometimes I think he's getting on somebody for thinking too much <laughs> out there but uh, he's not holding anything close to the vest right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're watching the Big South Network brought to you in part by Hardy. Morehead State, his first of the game. So he was just Happy penalized. To the goal. First down. His team trying to restrain him a little bit. I'm not sure what he said. He did run out onto the field. Didn't like something out there. Well, he, we've said it. He's also the offensive coordinator, and he's still got a few more words. Uh, so he, there's a lot of responsibility on his plate. I can't imagine being the head coach as well as being the coordinator. A uh, lot going on. Yeah, that's a lot of responsibility. And uh, he's not too thrilled with what's taking place right now. Fourteen twenty here to go in the fourth quarter. Liberty up 55 17. The Eagles start at the 12 yard line. First down 23. And uh, maybe a couple of yards there and a little pushing and shoving yeah, this, by the front lineman. This is what you don't want to see, right? A game that's decided. You don't want to see it devolve into some kind of street fight out there where somebody ends up getting hurt. You hope that guys can keep their cool, just play the game the right way and get out of here without any injuries. Second down 20. That was a gain of three for Beasley. We've seen this all night long where they uh, sort of hurry up and get to the line and then uh, back up and look to the sideline for the play. Page. And it's caught at the 24 yard line, a yard short of the original line of scrimmage. Sames with that catch. Nathan Sames, redshirt junior. Played at Collins High School. Third down for the Eagles. Next week, they'll be at Austin P for a 7 p.m. game next Saturday. We're running out of time trying to get that play signaled in. Page. Pass. Caught and dropped at the 35 yard line. It was intended for Adams, Devontae Adams. I thought he was going to hold on to it. Yeah, good ball. You know, we've seen some things from Page. I think he's going to be a good one for them the rest of the season, especially here in the second half. He's made some adjustments. 
delivers a pretty accurate ball. You got to remember, too, the type of crowd, the type of environment that Moorhead State walked into in this ball game is not one that they see every day. So they were a little shell-shocked out of the gate. But here in the second half, they've kind of settled in. Boone's punt, again, a high spiral. Fair catch called for at the 30-yard line, and uh, Stubbs almost lost it, but had the composure to hold on to it. Made us all a little bit nervous after we had gotten so relaxed in this game. <laughs> little drama there. So impressed with Turner Gill and his staff last Saturday and the way they coached this team to beat Baylor 48 45 in Waco, Texas. And I was really impressed, uh, Matt, not only with Liberty's quickness, Liberty seemed very quick in that game, but also um, just the composure, you know, yeah. the way in which uh, as the game progressed, no one panicked uh, in any kind of way, even when some things went against the Flames. And that really made such a difference down, the, especially the fourth quarter. And off across the 35 to the 38 yard line goes Mitchell Lewis, the red shirt freshman out of Auburn, Alabama. Mitchell Lewis just trucked somebody. Take a look. We, we know this guy. Oh, good. Get out of the way. <laughs> he is a physical runner. Young man, as you mentioned, out of Auburn. We've heard talk about him. He actually ran into two point conversion in the uh, Baylor game, but he's going to get a little action here now. Late in this ball game, and you like what you see on his first carry. Six foot, 220 pounds. Not going to shy away from contact. Somebody for the Eagles got injured on that play, like one of the linemen. I think it's Sutherland. The trainers are out there working with him. Next week, Liberty is back at Williams Stadium, and uh, the Flames will be hosting Indiana State. Matt, you said uh, they were <laughs> playing Tennessee today. Yeah, it, it didn't go well. They <laughs> lost 42-7. Sure. Uh, to 7. They're now 0-2. I think they lost to Eastern Illinois by a couple of points in their first ball game. Yeah. But uh, out of a tough conference, the Missouri Valley, and think about this. If Liberty's able to win that game against Indiana State, put them at 3-0 and on the season, the next up on the schedule, you go at Jacksonville State, who is fifth in the country right now at the FCS level. That sets up a huge game on the road against Jacksonville State, a team that came here and thumped Liberty pretty good a year ago. So yeah, yeah. take care of your business next week. And that game is a must-see ball game at Jacksonville State. After that Baylor win, Liberty moved into the top 25 at number 20. I actually expected the, the Flames to, to move higher in the poll, maybe around the 11 to 15 mark, but uh, because it's the last year of the FCS, Liberty can't go to the playoffs, can't win the conference championship. Sometimes the writers and people who vote in those polls don't uh, give you a lot of attention. Lewis uh, carrying there. So uh, regardless, Liberty ranked 20th in the uh, stats FCS poll. They're not eligible for the coaches FCS poll. Third down seven. Backup quarterback Cunningham has been there most of the second half. Downfield, his pass caught wide open, 40, 30. Hit hard right at the 30-yard line. Great job by the Flames. Number 18, that's Obafin. Yeah, the freshman tight end. We told you, an athletic kid. He had it one in his hands earlier in the game, couldn't hang on to it. Made sure to lock that one up. And then you saw the athleticism for a big guy as he sprinted downfield. Cunningham again, this time not able to make the catch inside the 10 yard line intended for Stubbs. Flames showing a little life here in the second half trying to move it down. Uh, Cunningham is uh, two of five passing for 29 yards. He did throw an interception. A, a week ago 11 different receivers caught a pass. So far tonight seven different receivers. Cunningham complete. Out of bounds around the 25 yard line. Cephas Reddick. Yeah, make Redshirt it eight. Junior. Reddick had a couple of catches a week ago as he was involved in the offense. Again, there's guys you forget about. 
They can really contribute when they get the chance. There are just so many weapons, especially at the receiver position on this team. It's hard to get them all touches. <laughs> Got to keep everybody happy. Yeah. <laughs> when you win, it's a lot easier. Yes. Cunningham's pass is caught. A first down for the Flames inside the 20-yard line. It's Reddick who takes that one as well. well now I like, I like the fact that they're letting Cunningham throw it around a little bit. You're giving him the experience, but you're not just forcing him to hand the ball off and work some clock. Let him throw it a little bit, get a feel for some of these receivers. You hope you never have to have them in there in a crucial situation. Lewis caught behind the line of scrimmage that time. It was Brooks who got a hand on his uh, ankle. Brooks is a big guy. Well, he looked big to me, and his, he's listed as 5'11", 231 pounds. I think he's a little bit bigger than that. Maybe he's just got a lot of padding around his waist. <laughs> That's what I say, too. <laughs> uh, it's just the padding around the waist. We are talking about Buckshot Calvert putting on weight uh, in the offseason, which has really helped him as well. A little bumping and shoving down the sideline. Incomplete pass. It was intended for the Flames, number 84, Brett B a Bitter. But... Uh, I don't know, a little bumping down that sideline. I guess the officials decided just to let it go. Nine thirteen to play in the game. Cunningham facing a third down fourteen. Cunningham and overthrows his receiver. His receiver got hung up and didn't uh, didn't get to finish the route. It was bitter again. The intended uh, receiver, I believe, but he got hung up and uh, couldn't get to the end zone. Yeah, I'll give old uh, Probert another crack at it. This will be a 38-yard attempt. Talk about Mr. Reliable. good. Liberty just keeps adding to the score. This game has never been close. Liberty just marched it out early in the first quarter, just punching it in, and it's never been close. And I guess we didn't expect it to, do, to be. Liberty a 30-point favorite coming into this one. Back in a minute. Running of the Bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. What's the Big South? What's the Big South? What's the Big South? It's our home. It's our home. Rooted in excellence. Built from hard work. It's our backbone. An undeniable will. Driven to surpass our potential. It's our heart. Unbreakable bonds. And our journey. Striving for more. Determined to lead. Day in and day out. This is the Big South. Where winners are made. To celebrate Liberty's move to FBS, Liberty is giving away an all-expense-paid trip for two to the national championship game in Atlanta this January. For more information, you can visit lufootball.com to find out how you can register to win. Oh, wow, a lot of push-ups, 58 yeah. push-ups. Are you counting them? No, I, I hope somebody else is, but if that guy is doing push-ups for every score, he's going to be jacked by the end of the night. So Dr. Gribben sitting there. He's a representative to the NCAA on behalf of Liberty with his wife in the stands, staying to the end. 9.03 to go in the game. Liberty's home opener of the 2017 season. From 
the goal line, 10, 15. That's it. Tackled by number 83 for the Flames. That was uh, Josh Tully. Oh, he's fired up. Yeah, you love seeing that. Guys, again, special teams. A lot of pride out there for those guys. For some of them, that may be the only time they get on the field. So you get that opportunity to make a play. And that's exactly what Tully did. You know, Liberty's not eligible for the Big South Championship uh, this year, but this is the 16th and final season for Liberty in the Big South Conference. Liberty was one of four teams that started the Big South Conference uh, 16 years ago. You know, that year, Gardner-Webb won. Uh, I think uh, Charleston Southern was second. Liberty was third. Elon was in the conference back then. Gain of about three. Liberty may not be able to win it. They may not be eligible for the postseason, but don't think for a second that that changes the way this team approaches this season. If you thought that hopefully that game at Baylor got you on track, because this team has a lot of pride. They want to prove some things to some people and forget the postseason. They want to show everybody that they belong at the FBS level. And that they're a program to be reckoned with. And so Forget the postseason, forget all that stuff at the end of the year. They're just trying to go out there and stop people and show that they belong with the big boys. Page pass incomplete intended for Robinson. Yeah, it's all about FBS now. Every, it's FBS bound. After that Baylor game, I was thinking it's FBS now. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was an unbelievable game. But obviously the Flames didn't just uh, rest on their laurels after that. They came out really aggressively to start this game and it's never been close. The second half has been a little messy and part of the second quarter, but just the nature of this kind of a game. But Liberty dominating in every aspect. Page to the 30 yard line. That's incomplete as well. Robinson trying to get credit for the catch, but the officials say no. There it is, there FBS go. bound. So this year, the last year in the FCS, 30th season in the FCS. And uh, next year, the transition year, Liberty, I think, playing uh, three or four FBS opponents, right? You have to have three home games, three FBS home games uh, next year. And, uh, and then the next year, the 2019 season, a full-fledged FBS member. And then you're talking about going to bowl games and things like that versus playoffs. It's going to be fun. Bounds, punt, stubs. 44-yard line, and boy, was he drilled on that return. It was number 25 who hit him really hard, L.D. Edwards the third. Stubbs seems okay. Yeah, after a hit like that, half surprised he ran to the right sideline. He got, and you look at the, the paint on the helmet there. What a collision. Still playing hard. The Eagles trailing, though, 58-17. We the people, we are innovators, dreamers, leaders. Yeah, we feel pain. We get tired, but it won't stop us. God's call is our pursuit and we will champion his name. As Liberty University Athletics continue to climb to new heights, Game On is your weekly source for all things Flames. We bring you inspirational stories of faith from this Division I program, as well as all the news and highlights that you crave. Game On is covering the world's largest evangelical university like no one else. So join us each week to see what's happening around Flames Nation. Get in the game and watch Game On. Flames fans, this check Big out. South Network game is brought to you in part by. All right.
right, Flames fans, check out the best deal in town. If you have kids 12 and younger, the Flames Kids Club is for you. Membership is only $25 and only $20 for each additional child. To join or for more information, you can call 434-582-4453 or visit libertyflames.com slash FKC. The Flames Kids Club. The officials are looking at this play again, maybe targeting again. Yeah, well, it was definitely the well, top of the helmet right to yep. the side of the face. Crown of the helmet. It looked like he lunged a little bit. You saw yeah. the paint on the top of the helmet there. Now, see, to me, that is uh, the, the clear definition of targeting. Well, there you see the definition. Crown of the helmet. So I would imagine we'll see that one called as well. And so we get one more look out here from the side. That has to be. I mean, that is. I mean, I'm sure. After review, there was targeting on the play yeah. by number 25, Morehead State. Number 25 is disqualified. 15-yard penalty. First down. What is uh Well. Yeah, what do you, what do our guys think about that? If anything, that was, that was a better, I think, targeting than the first one was. And that was such a bang, bang, quick play. Um, I don't know if there was intentionality in there, but. It doesn't, intentionality doesn't matter. I, I wouldn't call the play malicious, but I would say that it was definitely a, a hit from the crown of his head uh, to definitely the ear hole of, of Stubbs's uh, helmet. So I would definitely go for, you know, targeting on that play. Cunningham, a quarterback, completes it to Fitzgerald. Picking up about five yards on first down. Hey, don't forget to join us on Facebook after this game. Our post-game coverage, we'll hear from uh, Coach Gill. Of course, Rhett, DJ, and Miles will share yeah, their Miles, thoughts. Miles, the bow tie there on the graphic. Hey, I didn't know he had good. that kind of swag to him. Yeah. DJ has shorts on. You can't tell <laughs> right there. But, uh, but yeah, Facebook, Liberty, uh, I believe it's Liberty Flames Athletics uh, Facebook uh, page if you're not signed up. Well, you better up figure out that. if it is because you're going to need to be on there and watching too, right? Yeah, that's right. We'll be on there. Liberty Flames Athletics, you know, there's so many social media accounts associated with Liberty Athletics with the football and, and all of that. It's really fun. Like even the equipment staff has their own Facebook page and they post pictures of what uniforms the team's going to wear, what the locker rooms look like, all that kind of thing. So a lot of great, great uh, ways to connect with Liberty on social media. But our Facebook post game coverage will be on Liberty Flames Athletics. So if you don't have that, sign up for it. We'll hear from uh, Turner Gill in the post-game press conference. And uh, our guys, of course, will be sharing as well. Yeah, it looks like we had a fumble there. And Mitchell Lewis coughed it up. And it's going to be Morehead State football. Hey, tomorrow, LFSN's next broadcast will involve field hockey as Liberty takes on number six, Delaware. That's uh, tomorrow, 1 p.m. on ESPN3, LFSN's production of field hockey. Of course, we'll be with you, Matt and I, next Saturday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. The Flames football team host Indiana State. So the turnover, and the Eagles have it. First and 10 from the 23-yard line. Cherry now, the second-string quarterback, is in there for Moorhead State. Gives it to London, and London picks up a yard. Moorhead State with uh, 250 yards of offense, 63 on the ground. Yeah, everybody just trying to get out of here in one piece now. A lot of backups in there on both sides. Pass caught. Down around the 27-yard line is Sugar Ray Weish. Six minutes to go. I mentioned a good crowd on hand tonight. Now it's attendance, just over 17,000. Some of those having headed to the parking lot at this point in the ball game, but a lot of them still here sticking with this team till the end. And well, great way to start 
a season with these two wins. Great way to put on a show for your fans in the home opener. Give them, there was enough reason to come back next week. I think there's definitely one now with the electrifying offensive performance they saw this evening. Sherry's pass caught at midfield and to the 36 yard line goes Sugar Ray. Sugar Ray Weish. And the Eagles are moving it down the field. You mentioned 17,000 here. The all-time biggest crowd was 22,551 against Montana back in uh, September of 2015. That was a wild night. Oh, yeah. Sherry's pass caught. No running room this time for Sames. Under five minutes to go in the game. Kamani Donaldson, a freshman there. Is he got it? Backs up at that cornerback position. Young guy, haven't seen him much. But again, that's that's why these situations are so valuable for coaches. As fans, it's easy to kind of tune out maybe in a, with a score like this. As coaches, you're always evaluating. You're always putting in guys, hey, if it's a big league, get a back up in there. Let's see how he handles these situations. So there's no let up if you're a coach. You're still working hard to try to figure out what you have. Sherry's pass broken up. It was intended for Adams. Fox there defensively. Fox, another guy who we even saw out there some of the Baylor game. Trying to work himself into some more playing time at one of the cornerback spots. He's a sophomore. Developing that depth behind Peters and Chris Turner. That's going to be key at the cornerback positions for this team. Timeout. Liberty. Their first. 32nd. Eagles will face a third down and nine. 58 to 17. Were you expecting Liberty to have 58 points in this game? Uh, I thought they'd get to around 50. Uh, so, yeah, this isn't, I mean, I guess the way that they did it, as quickly as they did it out of the gate, surprised me just a little bit. Yeah, they had 45 at halftime. Yeah, but, uh, you know, this offense, again, we knew they had a lot of playmakers, and yet they still stood out. They still, you know, made you kind of do a double take when you saw some of the plays that you saw out there on the field. And we didn't know until right before this ball game that B.J. Farrow was going to be back. And what an impact he had. Six yep. receptions, 177 yards, three touchdowns. He is so fast. Sure-handed, yeah, he's, he's a big-time target. Third down nine, pass complete, 35-yard line to Adams. Adams inside the 30, tripped up by Fox. Uh, it looks like it might be a first, though. Yep, they'll say it's a first down. All these teams care about right now is that clock continues to tick. Handoff. Beasley wrestled out of bounds. Tackle by Elijah Benton. Benton, the redshirt sophomore, 6'1", 190 pounds. Second down, eight for the Eagles. 3.30 to go. Liberty's going to improve to 2-0 and on the year. First time since 2010 that the Flames have started 2-0. Beasley. Yeah, the Flames can have their 15th home opener victory in 16 tries. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty nice stretch. Taking care of business on your home turf. Again, this environment. It's not what a lot of these teams that come in here are used to. Close to 20,000 screaming fans. You can get in. Getting your head a little bit as a visiting player. Flames took advantage of that here today as Moorhead stayed. Never looked back. Timeout being taken. Timeout. Moorhead State. They're second. 30 seconds. 
So Moorhead State taking a timeout with 2.29 to go. LFSN's executive producer is Kevin Keyes. Executive director Casey Spiron, our game producer tonight, Matthew Bird, director Ken Toes. Just a great crew that puts this uh, production on every Flames football Saturday. Hope you're enjoying it either on the Big South Network or ESPN3 locally on TV24, WFFP, or uh, of course on the Walk Network, many of you around the country. Next week, we might give you a chance to send us a Twitter message on where you're viewing from. We'll look forward to that. Always fun, especially when folks take pictures of themselves watching <laughs> the game from all kinds of settings. And next week, it's Indiana State, 6 p.m. Eastern time on many of these same LFSN TV stations and video outlets. Sherry's pass incomplete. Well, it was a touchdown opportunity right there for number seven. Uh, yeah, that was uh, Tarver, but it was just a little bit overthrown. Fourth down. Tarver doing a good job returning kickoffs, although he's not gotten many opportunities because uh, Probert normally kicks it into the end zone. Field goal opportunity. In to kick it. Foster, 44-yard attempt, no good. He had a 53-yarder, though, that he was successful on in the uh, first half. But that one was no good. Fans, if you have a group outing or a special birthday celebration, be sure to call 434-582-SEAT to customize your special event. You can get special recognition through PA and video board announcements, group tickets, a tailgating spot, and even catering. Just call 434-582-SEAT to book your event today. Under the lights here on Liberty Mountain, a little bit of a breeze. Starting to become football weather. And always fun on Liberty Mountain. Football Saturdays. Lewis picks up five. Yeah, you know, a lot of people wondered, would this Liberty team be tired? You mentioned the long travel they had coming back from Baylor. They ran 103 plays last week. Boy, would they be exhausted from all the from all the plays they ran against Baylor? No, not so much. This team looked <laughs> fresh right out of the gate. And a lot of that credit goes to the strength and conditioning coach, Bill Gillespie. That guy is one of the best in the nation at what he does. And this team continues to get bigger, faster, and stronger every year, it seems like. And frankly, in that Baylor game, they were the better conditioned team down the stretch. They, there's a look at Coach Bill right there. They wore the Bears down late in that ball game. And a lot of that, and Coach Gill will tell you the same thing, is due to that big guy right there, Coach Bill Gillespie. does a great job with this group. And uh, they continue to take good athletes and make them great under his tutelage. And he knew it, you know, right at the end of that game as the clock was expiring. He's the one who ran over to Coach Gill and gave him a huge hug yeah. because uh, he knew it was that strengthening and conditioning that helped Liberty play well in that fourth quarter as Lewis carries for what looks like a first down. Lewis tried as hard as he could to stay in bounds to keep that clock moving. Yeah, it's a Liberty first down. Under a minute to play in this game. Flames doing a lot of substituting. This entire second half has been primarily second and third string players. A few fourth string out there too. Just going to run out the clock. Well, Liberty has put together 527 yards of total offense, 200 rushing, 327 passing. I know Coach Gill normally wants to get about 60% of the production from run and 40% from pass, so it's reversed a little bit here, but just a lot of big plays in the first half. You know, that's really what accounted for a lot of the passing yardage. 
That's the last play. Liberty is going to improve to two and zero. Oh. Coach Turner Gill, in his sixth season, will pick up win number thirty-seven. And um, the uh, Moorhead State Eagles are going to drop to one and one. Moorhead State will be uh, on the road at Austin P next Saturday at 7 p.m. Flames fans will be excited to see Indiana State come to Williams Stadium next Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern. And we'll have live coverage on LFSN TV. A few fireworks overhead as the teams greet each other at the center of the field. And even though we had a little bit of pushing and shoving in this game, not a lot, but a little bit of that, a couple of targeting fouls that resulted in the ejection of a couple of players, uh, they look pretty happy out there right now. Yeah, certainly the guys wearing blue are feeling pretty happy right about now. And you know what? You love seeing a group like Liberty. This is what they were supposed to do in a game like this. You like seeing them come out right away and take care of business the way that they should. They were the more talented team. They showed it right out of the gate, and they uh, played this game and finished it the way that you would like them to. Liberty wins it 58-17. Live coverage on LFSN Television continues right after this break. Stay with us for the post-game show, Liberty 2-0. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. The Hardy's Sausage and Egg Biscuit. Stop on over and get two of them for $2.50. Two sausage and egg made from scratch biscuits for just $2.50. Amazing times we live in, folks. Amazing times. Now at Hardy's. The running of the Bulldogs? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much money Aaliyah saved by switching to Geico. South, where winners are made. Today's post-game report is presented by Coca-Cola. Taste the feeling. The Flames win at 58. This Big South Network game is brought to you in part by Phillips Lighting, official campus lighting partner of the Big South Conference. Sunbelt Rentals, we have equipment for that. And Marriott, the official hotel partner of the Big South Conference. Flames win at 58-17, and as they always do, the Liberty team going over to thank the home fans, the students who stayed throughout for this very lopsided win. The Flames had a, well, they were 30-point favorites coming in, and they did not disappoint the fans. No, and Buckshot Calvert did not disappoint either after his huge performance against Baylor. You wondered how would he come out in this ball game? People saying, oh, he was on Sports Center. What if it all goes to his head? Yeah, not a problem. He came out, threw for five touchdowns, didn't even play in the second half. He was so good in the first half. So, Forget all that stuff. Forget all the big head, all of that. 
He took care of business tonight and so did this Flames offense. Oh, they certainly did. Buckshot Calvert just doing a little bit of everything. There was that pass to uh, B.J. Farrow to get it going. And then King. That's right. He got some run after the catch plays from his receivers, including Damian King, who put on a show here on this play. But uh, Buckshot Calvert, 13-21, 281 yards, five touchdowns. And that was our play of the game, by the way, the Damian <laughs> King. Uh, play the game. Here it is right here. Damian King doing his thing on this one. Again, just a short pass coming across the field and then made one, two, three, four, five people miss. Here's another guy. They get six, 42 yards to the house. I'm told this play kind of blew up on social media. Sports oh, yeah. Center was tweeting it out. Yeah. We'll see if it ends up making Sports Center tonight. But uh, big deal for him, big deal for the Flames offense to get rolling early. Well, it really was. It just a special play. And of course, there was BJ Farrell. Great to have him back in the lineup. Yeah, player of the game, six receptions, 177 yards, the three TDs was out last week. They were checking on some eligibility issues. We found out right before the game he was going to play, and he was ready. So credit to him. He didn't know if he was going to be playing this week or not either, but he was prepared, stepped on the field, and made it happen. Flames doing a little bit of everything, just playing great football here. The home opener of the 2017 season and 2-0 uh, and for the first time since 2010. Septembers have been difficult for Liberty the last few years because of some of the, the big opponents they've had to go up against. So 2-0 is a pretty good start. How many people do you think would have expected Liberty to be 2-0? <laughs> oh, my. Not two, many. 2%. Yeah, yeah 2%. <laughs> not many. But you steal a huge win at Baylor, and now you're rolling. Now you get Indiana State next week, a chance to start 3-0 and before for that big showdown on the road at Jacksonville State. So it's all out there for the Flames to put together a special season. Forget the playoffs. There's still a chance to have a real special year for this Flames squad. Let's take a look at the game at a glance, sponsored by Geico. The final stats in this game, Liberty with over 500 yards of total offense. And that was calling the dogs off after the half, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. You know, Buckshot didn't play the second half. A lot of backups in there throughout the second half. So they easily could have hung 75 or 80 in this game if they'd wanted to. But Coach Gill, classy guy, letting the backups get some work. It should That should pay off certainly in the long haul. And Liberty still ends up with some gaudy numbers there, as you see. I think that little kid even scored at one point tonight. That little kid they just showed. I think ago. so. Hey, there's our guys that will be joining us on Facebook Live. So make sure you check out Liberty Flames Athletics. Liberty Flames Athletics on Facebook. If you're not connected, you need to do that right now. And join us for the post-game coverage, which is coming up right after we go off the air. It's a lot of fun. A little more relaxed. And uh, DJ with the shorts on. Yeah, he'll finally loosen up and really get opinionated. So we're looking <laughs> yeah. forward uh, to hearing that in the uh, Facebook live post game show as you get a look at that crew there but uh should be fun we'll hear from coach gill i'm always interested to hear his thoughts after a game especially a game like this i want to hear what a coach is able to nitpick right because coaches even with games like this they always find things to kind of <laughs> nitpick about that's their job so i'm interested to hear what he's kind of concerned about what he wants to correct going forward you know he mentioned going at halftime that he was not happy with the way the defense was playing so. well the penalties i know he wasn't happy about so mm -hmm. that's something a kind of a mental mistake that should be an easy fix the defense though played pretty well tonight again against a lesser competition. Liberty was a 30-point favorite for a reason. Next week will be another test. A team from a really good conference, the Missouri Valley Conference. So it'll be another test for the Flames as they take on the Sycamores. It'll be Indiana State next uh, Saturday, 6 p.m. Eastern, on many of these LFSN television networks and video outlets. And we're so excited to be a part of that and be bringing that to you wherever you might be on uh, the LFSN network. And, uh, you know, with Liberty playing so well the first two games of the season, tackles for loss really critical in this game. Yeah, you know, you saw early on the defense being more aggressive, bringing some blitzes, bringing the linebackers, trying to pressure the quarterback, Page. You saw that early. Second half, some of those guys were out there. Page was able to kind of settle in and make some plays down the field. But after last week, you really wanted to see the linebackers and defensive ends create some pressure because they weren't able to do that in Waco. And, you know, they showed up here early especially. That set the tone in the game. Yeah, it really did. And, uh, of course, Liberty offensively is, was so impressive. You know, from the very beginning, they moved it down the field. We just keep wondering, uh, Buckshot Calvert, can he play uh, a bad game? I mean, everybody can play a bad game. But to this point, 
He's done his job. He's been accurate, which they wanted him to approve in the accuracy department. He's done that. And really, he's just he's just feeding all these playmakers, right? Not to take anything away from Buckshot. He's been great. But boy, his job is a whole lot easier when you've got six or seven guys, like a Contori Matthews, who we haven't even mentioned, who had a big night. So many playmakers on this team. It makes his job a whole lot easier just spoon-feeding those guys and then letting them do the rest, letting their athleticism and talent take over. And we saw that happen on a number of plays tonight. It's been fun to watch Buckshot, too, because he's so poised, yeah. so relaxed. Nothing seems to bother him at all. Just and he's a sophomore. Just a sophomore. Just a, you forget that sometimes. Just a sophomore. This kid has an incredibly bright future, and uh, it'll be fun to see where he's able to take this program. We've enjoyed being with you on LFSN as the Liberty Flames go 2-0 on the year after this easy victory over Moorhead State 58-17. Postgame coverage extended on Facebook coming up, Facebook Live. Check it out on Liberty Flames Athletics. We can't wait to see you there.